wait, before we do talk about this, I want to get the podcast started. I am totally down for you guys to talk about it after though, if that's cool. Sure, sure, sure. No, no flame arena, no flame arena, promise. Uh, we're just a little bit late. <laughs> okay, we're, wait, yeah. we're still waiting on, we're still waiting on, I believe one person to join the whereby, but maybe they don't want to, which is totally fine. But anyways, without further ado, um, I already gave the introductions to the podcast. So now I want to introduce our guests in no particular order. Um, I'm going to start with Echoplex. Um, tell us a little bit about you, Echoplex. What are you about? What's your stream about? Um, yeah, what do you do? Um, I mean, we stream about like cult conspiracy theorists, um, the conspiracy theory communities and extremism. We're not heavy on like a uh, horse race, like, oh shit, man, thank you. Sorry about that. We're not like heavy on like horse race, horse race stuff or uh, like political theory or whatever. We mostly just make fun of people who think that the clouds are full of barium or whatever. Nice, nice. Good and uh, where, can, where can people find you social media wise? Well, um, right now, the best place to find me is I'm on Grinder. I'm trying to figure out which one of the headless torsos is Steven Crowder. Okay. No, um, All right. I mean, you can find us on Twitter at EplexM, and you can find us here on Twitch at Echoplex Media. The rest of the places don't matter. Nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Polar's World, what's up? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Okay. I've had a pretty solid day. My name is Polar's World. I am 17. Uh, I've been streaming, I think, since. Uh, around july um i tend to cover like tend to do a lot of debates i took like a week off to do some college stuff now i'm back i have a big project coming up we're gonna be doing politics um irl like political activities i like Thank the you, irl stream now um debates uh things like that Thank you very much. left um so it should be a lot of fun nice nice glad to finally meet you um Yay, demon job. mama how are you doing tell us a little bit about yourself if you would yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on tonight. Um, I am a political streamer and debate streamer. Do a lot of debate content, a lot of politics commentary. I am a, a pretty solid lefty with uh, some affinity for anarchistic philosophies, uh, though I don't really go by any uh, single tendency. You can find me on demonmama.com. That's the easiest way. M-A-M-A, -M -A, demonmama.com. All my links are there. And you should join my Discord because we have an absolutely awesome Discord community. You'll get all my notifications and you can be a part of the fun. We're even doing a holiday giveaway. So come on in, come join us, come hang out in the community. So we'd love to have you. Wonderful. And I was just going to say the resolution on your cam for me is a little bit short uh, or not short, but like not good. Is, does anybody else have that experience with Demon Mamas? I can just yeah, reconnect. Yeah. Or, okay. Can just make a I was going to say, yeah. If you just want to reconnect, that's fine. I'll let you back in, obviously. I'm not going to keep you out. Um, but we'll move on with the introduction. CTV, or Critically Thinking Veteran. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's up? How you doing this fine Wednesday evening? Doing pretty good. Uh, I'm an asshole. And uh, True. I like to talk about politics. So there you go. Nice. Good stuff. Um, that was it, right? Just so clear? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All right. You uh, you can totally shout out any links you want to if you want as well, by the way. What about now? Is it okay. Freems, what's up? How you doing? Always Tell us uh, who you are, where people can find you, etc. cetera. Yeah, yeah. Twitch.tv slash Freems. Uh, lately, I've mostly been playing games and political streamers. We'll come hang out. We'll talk about whatever. Um, I also cover politics in Appalachia from a leftist perspective. Yeah, don't uh, worry about it. I'm one of hey, the only actual rednecks on Twitch, uh, you know, pro union, uh, pro labor. So uh, come check me out if that's something you might be interested in. Sweet, sweet. And Sako, a wild Sako, how are you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, doing great, doing great. I am Sako. I stream on Twitch uh, once every twenty so days. Uh, no, I'm. I'm trying to stream more consistently. I've usually just been uh, gaming streams, but lately I've been getting more into politics. I'd love to participate in more roundtables in the future. Uh, the best place to find me is at my Twitter, which is at NiceGuySocko. I have a different name everywhere I go. That's how I live, in conflict and contradiction. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Oh, and nice then I also stream on Twitch, which is Twitch TV, and that's just Socko TV. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Brento, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. How you doing, man? Uh, hey, guys. Hey, uh, I'm Brento Box. Uh, I do, I guess I do debates on Twitch. I don't. I just kind of like talking about the politics, philosophy, whatever uh, anyone wants to discuss. Uh, hanging out on Twitch communities. I don't really stream much on my own channel. Um, we'll but, find uh, out, Pen. Just we'll enjoy find it. Out. Um, meeting people and, and talking to them about whatever. 
Wonderful. Sweet. And then finally, I guess my name, I'm Wire Guitar. I'm going to be moderating this conversation tonight. Uh, it's going to be great. We got three topics lined up. But before we get into that, I just want to say real quick, cordially, of course, this is not in any way, shape, or form me trying to act authoritarian. But uh, we're going to try to keep this conversation as productive as possible. That means keeping, I mean, you know, you can swear, but trying to keep name calling to as much of a minimum as possible. Uh, try to be nice, you know. Uh, I found that uh, the best conversations that happen in politics, in my experience anyways, happen when both parties can at least respect each other to have an open and honest conversation about the issues themselves and not True. resort to just like, Most you know, we'll say blood sports for lack of a better phrase. Um, but I think that's it. Obviously, no TOS. Always I think nice that's when people are nice to me. Here. We are on Twitch after be all. Um, with all of that being said, uh, the preamble sort of out of the way. Let's move into our first topic. Um Oh, yeah, pullers. Excellent. Let's see. There we go. I think yeah, sorry. I, I had some hardware acceleration issues. Oh, you're, you're totally fine. Hey, does respect mean uh, letting all of the people yeah. here give super introduction? My bad. Brian, yeah, you're right. Okay, Brian, my bad. The whereby kept moving around because people kept leaving and joining. And so you got oh, it's good. It, Yeah, no, sorry, it's yeah, good, man. Yeah, yeah good. Brian, tell us, tell us about you, the StarCraft Grandmaster. Uh, okay. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, I'm good, man. I have been uh, around Wired Guitar <laughs> since he was Wired Guitars. Uh, back in the day, pre losing the S. Yeah, I don't really stream that much anymore. When I, I do think, stream, I it's usually Grandmaster before. Zerg play. Um, hmm. And I was a philosophy major, got my bachelor's in philosophy, and I was kind of a debate ward in high school and college. Thank so. you, Somniostatic. Really, yeah. I decided it. to pop out of the woodwork to rejoin hmm. Twitch for this little yeah, debate. Yeah, probably Caskey. We'll see. This little debate show. Appreciate that little subtle jab there. Okay, Timely. sweet. Thanks. Now that all the introductions are out of the way, especially from the assholes, um, we, can, we can get underway with the topics. Um, the first topic, I'll just read it out here as I've written it. Um, on December 14th, Kelly, Kelly Loeffler, we all know who Kelly Loeffler is, right? Running for Georgia State Senate um, in one of the probably most anticipated runoff elections, one of the only two, um, but certainly a very anti highly anticipated uh, runoff election, um, posed with Chester Doles, who spent years as a member of the KKK and the neo-Nazi National Alliance. Do we expect this to influence the already closed Georgia Senate elections? Yes. Should this be something that she's impugned for, or is this yes. another instance of cancel culture going too far? Um, and before uh, guilt by association. Yeah, um, so we'll give our introductory takes here uh, in no particular order again. We'll start with, uh, we're gonna start backwards this time. So pollers, what are your thoughts on this uh, on this issue as, I, as we've sort of presented it? As someone who lives in Georgia and he's been doing the, some political work down here, it, I don't really think her posing with Charles Doles is gonna make that large of an effect. Um, Kelly Loeffler has already demonstrated to be a terrible debater, doesn't really have the ability to demonstrate her points effectively, uh, it's like some really sketchy things, and it really hasn't affected the way that the Republican Party views her. So I don't really think this is going to have that large of an effect. Personally, as someone who's been living here, I didn't even hear about the story until you mentioned it and sent it as a topic. So I think it's going to have little to no effect. Now, whether she should be impugned for it, nice. uh, whether she should face a lot of flack on it, uh, for it, really depends on whether or not she purposely knew. Because I tried reading the story um like the, the couple stories that referred to it it didn't seem really to mention whether she knew or not but if she did that's probably a knock on her um but if she didn't i don't think it's very much to, sure, like actually. i don't think there's very much to, to put on her um i think there are a lot more effective things this is kelly that yeah, the democratic party yeah. uh could get on kelly loffler for she's not an angel she's not a saint she sure wasn't elected um so that's my take on that specifically. I don't think it's going to have that large of an effect on the election. I don't really know if she should be impugned on it. It really depends on whether she should, she knew or not. Sweet. Um, Brento, what are your thoughts on this issue? Uh, so I'm not, you know, I wasn't too aware of, uh, of a lot of what's going on in Georgia. Uh, I read the article and I looked at the picture and uh, it just, the picture literally just looks like, you know, just like anyone comes up to a, uh, someone I'm running for office, take, and then, hey, and it looks like he's the guy holding the camera, so it looks like it's his own picture or something, and then just snap picture, and I, you know, and then I don't, I can't project anything beyond that. It looks like it's a non-issue. Uh, it looks like the guy was probably, or he was associated with the KKK in the 90s or something, but as far as, as saying, like, does that rub off on her politically? Should she be condemned? That seems like uh, political opportunism, or they're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill to gain, like, political uh, advantage or something. It literally just looks like a picture that any politician in any race at any point would take with anyone who comes up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that it's a, a neo-Nazi, or not a neo-Nazi, but, you know, the, a white supremacist, the KKK guy that did it. Um, yeah, like and people are, 
being like, well, we could use that against her. That's what it seems like this is. I see. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Sako, what are your thoughts on this issue? Um, to be honest, like I, I have the same kind of opinion as Polar. Uh, I don't think it will influence her race at all. I think I also think Warnock will, will win his race and then everybody else will lose theirs. That's how I predict the Georgia runoff going because I think what really... Joe Biden was the first person to win Georgia as a Democrat since Jimmy Carter. And that's been 40 years. So that's really something when you think about it. And I think the main reason for that was just the amount of uh, people of color, especially women of color, that showed up uh, to turn out for Joe Biden. I, I think yes, that's Raphael Warnock can yep. energize those that's same people. Uh, and I think that's how he wins the Georgia runoff. As far as like, uh, should yeah, she be is. like, yes, it is. what was the word we used? Impugned. Impugned, yeah, I thought so. Uh, I mean, it's it's okay. not really that surprising to me. Like, it, it could have been a coincidence, but like, she has a history of um, not being, how do I want to say this? I don't know. It's no secret that she hasn't been like uh, the most racially sensitive person uh, after I read, I read in that article where it's like she owned, what was it? 40 something percent of the Atlanta dream. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. And she was like, she wrote a letter to the commissioner talking about how like uh, after the season restart, like the whole thing they did with the, I don't know what the the WNBA did, but I know the NBA had Black Lives Matter written on the court and the, you know their warm up sweaters. Uh, I know she was super upset about that and wrote like a really uh, angry letter to the commissioner. So like it, it's not surprising to me, especially when you see that she endorses people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like it's nothing that I wouldn't expect from someone like that. Sure. Um, CTV, what are your thoughts on this issue? If you have any. Um. <laughs> Well, just posing a picture with somebody in a reason to assume association at the same time, uh, Doles is, at least from what he's proclaiming now, if you have uh, is associated thoughts. with a completely different group that has nothing to do with racism or anything like that. So uh, while you could remain suspect of somebody that has a past of it, if you're really of the belief that if somebody does their time for a crime that they're... They should be able to re-enter society, which I think most people on the left are, uh, especially when they're more for rehabilitative oh, justice yeah. than the guy. Than, uh, we'll talk about this. the other kind. Then shouldn't be anything suspect about this at all. The guy but who the fact that we're even having a conversation was, about it uh, kind of makes everybody else look suspect. So I'm kind of curious how the room's going to fall out. Went to prison. For sure, for sure. We'll we'll open up to open discussion here once we get uh, past the just sort of preliminary Hell yeah, here. Dan's right. uh, Demon Mama, what are your thoughts on this issue? Yeah, um, I have no idea. Like, I don't live in Georgia, so I don't know exactly how it will um, affect the election, if at all. Um, it's hard to say. I, I feel like there's probably some chance of it having at least some blowback by the time uh, things finally heat up. I know we're really approaching the, uh, the vote here, and um, I don't know. It's been a you know, race has been a big um, issue in Georgia, and it's not a good look to pose with somebody who's uh, a neo-Nazi and a KKK member, especially for someone like Kelly Loeffler, who already um, signals to that sort of base a lot. Uh, do I think she should be impugned for it? I don't know about impugned, but I think she should certainly be critiqued and questioned for it. She's a public figure who has regularly signaled to the far right. I mean, our entire argument against Raphael Warnock recently was just saying, oh, the radical liberals, the radical liberals, the radical liberals, and a bunch of, like, vague QAnon signaling. And again, this is the person who used her, her position of privilege to simultaneously divest um, from um, stocks that were inconvenient after she found out about the extent of the coronavirus pandemic while uh, pushing anti-mask and anti-lockdown measures. Um, which has cost many people their lives. I think that Kelly Loeffler is about the worst person imaginable, um, uh, you know, right now in, in, in office. One of the worst. I don't know, maybe not the worst. And as a result, I think it's perfectly um, rational to give um, some level of scrutiny to who she poses for pictures with, especially if she isn't willing to, like, disavow that person publicly after being called on it. 
Um, I think that that should be the more important part. Um, mm -hmm. As for whether this is an example of cancel culture, no. Oh, my God. That's a hilarious allegation. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is a guy, like a, a, a somebody who was convicted of hate crimes, somebody who's been involved with nationalist, uh, right-wing neo-Nazi nationalist groups and the KKK. Now, people are well within their right to question that and say, hey, this is fucking weird, even if it's just a ca casual photo. She should have no problem saying, yeah, fuck that guy. She should. Sure. Freems, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, basically just going to repeat what almost everyone else has said, that um, fuck that guy. But not to mention, like right now, I think there's like over like 100 uh, pastors from black churches um, sending her letters. Uh, it seems like any time that Warnock has shown yeah, support see. for – any type of like BLM or anything, she attacks him as him just being a socialist or a radicalist. Uh, so I don't know. My opinion of it hasn't changed, of her has not changed because it wasn't very how to begin with. Uh, it doesn't surprise me, and I think it changes nothing. But, unfor but that's unfortunate that that's the case. Nice. Brian, you got any thoughts on this? Yeah, a ton of thoughts, but I'll be try. I'll try and be really brief because uh, I know we're going to go into open discussion. I think you know to the extent that this affects her, I don't think it'll be that much, um, especially because I don't even think anybody follows like very much of the WNBA. So when they come out and say something about you know her involvement or make her divest in the team, I bet you most people couldn't even tell you you know what the wnba team is that it's she's invested in dollars. so i don't think that will impact her very nice much meme. but any impact that has will probably be amplified by the fact that she didn't primary for anything before nothing you know she was like was appointed by vague sexism, um i want to say the governor of georgia right in 2019 and that was in december sure. of 2019 so it's only really been a year and when you don't have to primary i feel like that just leads you to weaker candidates so you know her incumbency probably won't take with it the general like benefits that most incumbent um electors or i'm sorry uh elected officials get to run with so it, it could have some sort of an impact i think the bigger impacts will be whether or not um as much turnout happens because of like voting by mail and stuff like that sure and then lastly echoplex do you have any thoughts on this the one thing I didn't do is look up the, the new group that this guy's supposedly associated with. I know CTV said that the new group wasn't a racist group or whatever, but I'd have to know more about that group to know like where he's sitting right mm -hmm. now. But I kind of also echo this this idea yep. that other people said at the the first people said that like when you're campaigning and people want to take a picture, you don't got you don't got time to go look at their Twitter. Like yeah. you you just take pictures of everybody, and then when people complain about it, you go, hey, people get in line to take a picture with me at my campaign events. I don't know who they all are. It's part of campaigning. Of course, not all of them are going to be good people. But I don't even think that's what she said, right? She didn't say anything like that, I don't think. And as far as cancel oh, culture, like, yeah. I'm this chief technical officer of cancel culture, so uh, I'm all for it. If, if it is cancel culture. Sure. Yeah. Um, that, so yeah, before we do open to open this or get into open discussion, I feel like I should clear the air a little bit. There is, um, at least a pretty reputable AP article, um, in which she, I, I don't know if I'd say denounces this figure, but she says she has no idea that the figure himself was a neo-Nazi. And then it seems like a lot of this discussion is going to be based on whether or not, um, like we know what group Chester Doles is associated with currently, am, yes. uh, which is a question that we could have for CTV. Am, yes, so Rowling. CTV, um, I think you're listening cause you have a wireless headset. Um, do you know anything about like the group that Chester Doles is currently associated with? Um, again, we know that he was formerly associated with like the KKK, but do you know anything about his current activities? I've read the same article as you guys did. It says, although he claims his current American Patriots USA group is free of racism, right? So I'm just literally referencing the article you sent me. So did y'all not read it? Yeah. No, yeah, we read as okay, as so I, tell I don't know why it's like a question that. for CTV then, because it's the like article, it's in the article. Yeah, the article doesn't really go into any information about that group. So I think what Wired was asking was like, do you have any information that went above? No, I'm just telling you that he's claiming yeah, right. that this is the this is what his claim is. That's what's in the article. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's like, OK, so you can be suspect of what he says, uh, but I don't know anything more specific about the group itself. So, but okay. we do have a claim that it's free yeah. of racism. So, you know, eh. 
Well, you yeah. know, so, like, I mean, his, trustworthy yeah. people, usually when I think of people who are trustworthy and are likely to tell the truth, I usually think of KKK members and neo-Nazis, for sure, yeah. Oh, they are on the top of the list for people that will tell you the truth because they don't give, you know, they don't care what, oh, yeah, what do you, you think about like, like when they wear those white hoods. I'm not hoods, saying they're yeah, good they people. That, yeah. what a, you know, those I'm white hoods saying, to hide like, their identity. Yeah. And that's actually, I don't agree with that at all. Like, especially like these like new um, far right or alt right groups are purposely being very sneaky and trying to rebrand, even though like, so... The uh, what is it? American Patriots USA is going through a rebrand by saying that they're not a racist group, but it is still packed full of active neo Nazis and Klansmen. Like it's not, it, I guess like their their thing is they're saying, well, we're not unified by that. But um, well, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's always the left that I always hear saying that you know we're for rehabilitative justice and second chances and third chances and you know we're all for people getting the benefit of the doubt and then when it's like oh well so they can't be redeemed if they do this well then hmm why is it that you would have such a contention when i say that pedophiles should get the death penalty right so, i'm sorry what? i don't know i don't yeah, know what, what any of this has to do with about? anything that we're talking those are about. two yeah, different that's... things one of those are two different things one of those things is like the public discourse and the other one of those things is the state taking away your freedom of your, or your life I'm yeah. just saying Those that not the same thing. it seems disingenuous to me for one thing, for you to be able okay. to just throw a label on somebody and them not to be able to have any type of way away from that. And then on another similar thing to be able to say, oh, no, there's we need to get rid of the whole thing. Right. Wait, because CTV, real they, quick. Are, there's a way out. So it, I don't know. It's. It are, are you, are you advocating for, for the death penalty for KKK members? Is that what you're advocating for? Because according to your did, own did, logic, you would be. Did I for this. did I say those specific oh. words? Well, I mean, no, I didn't. So I, you oh, implied so, that very strongly with your I, argument. So, so Demon, I think the point that CTV is trying to make is that, like, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with this, but he's like saying, well, uh, if we can give credence, right, and we let this individual like uh, come back from like the bad things that he does, he's done in the past, or like, no, how should I write this? If we want, if we believe in rehabilitative justice, that we should believe that this person has the ability to become a good person. And if you guys necessarily disagree with that, then he should be able to like go out and like uh, like engage in like forms of really bad punitive justice, such as like killing those same criminals in the past. Oh, That's oh, just the oh point. thank you. I I know that this is the um, what's it that thing that Vosh says sometimes the the vaguely gesturing and imagined hypocrisy yeah okay it's that thing Jesus. yeah uh, no, I, I just i just want to like I just, I just want to like repeat that like having the state take away your freedom of, or your life is a lot different than getting criticized on twitter yeah i was gonna yeah, say i don't think anyone here has distinct. like talked about anything other than that like i mean it's more or less just been uh, is this guy like do we have any evidence that this guy has changed his ways it doesn't appear to be the case i've received well, you, some people you, actually at this point since he's already served his time in the system you'd actually have to have evidence contrary to would you not no because that doesn't the latest thing, wait, wait, the latest no wait wait that, no wait that's, that's not what that means at least according to the article was in 2017 in charlottesville right so it's been three years since then do you have anything since then you know I so mean, if you how many things wait wait obviously no then if somebody was attending a far-right nazi-led rally in charlottesville three years ago and now they're still associated as far as i can tell with extreme far-right groups that have members of the kkk i think that's a very very rational conclusion to say this person if hasn't exactly not, if, if the group is said to okay. not be associated with racism which at this point according to the article that we all read that's no, not no that's his claim he right? claims so that. He claims unless that. you're unless you're actually going to take your fingers and type it into google and find out the information oh well we did already kind of though he's right still now. he's still associated with the neo-nazi groups as far okay, as okay so did tell. you look up american patriots usa i don't care about him American Patriots USA. Well, that's if he's the fucking in, group that we're a... talking about, so how can no, you not care that's about that's one it? of the groups. Wait, uh, CTV, you literally admit I it. realize that trying to keep up in this conversation is kind of hard for you at this moment. But <laughs> Especially when you're going all over the place. USA, say, because that's the group right. that he's that CTV, said to be you, Please, with, please, right? spare, me the, spare me the lecture. You literally said at the beginning of this that you didn't read anything more except for the, the, the article attached. So, And you use that as a defense for why you shouldn't have any original thoughts on it. If you want to just parrot the article, that's perfectly fine. I'm still trying to figure so, out what the original point he was trying to make was. Yeah, so trying to make like, the, he, he, uh, his. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, is this sound like what he's trying to say essentially is that the group itself, the um, uh, let me 
just remind myself that the American Patriots USA has made claims that they are attempting to rebrand their organization to have less or we'll say non-existent racist uh, Nazi logos, anti-Antifa logos, etc. Um, that the figure in question, the Chester Doles figure, has not attended a you know prominently or outwardly racist uh, group or rally since 2017, and that since then, um, if there's no evidence to show that this figure is a concurrent racist, that right. his association with the claims of you know Nazism, and I, KKK, and I guess et cetera, the argument the argument being made is that like because some people on the left believe in rehabilitative justice, that we can't make we can't personally attack no, this guy I think, I think i think what he's, he's trying, trying, trying to say i think what he's trying to say is that people on the left despite preaching real rehabilitative justice mm -hmm. all the time are very quick to judge and write off people that they don't like without seeing what they've done uh to change whether or not they've changed the slightest bit of you know association with something negative in the left's mind will instantly get you crucified and that's hypocritical when you want right. to talk about rehabilitation i'm point. sorry i'm yeah. sorry like now like, i'm not saying you have to agree yeah okay I mean, i'm just that, saying this is very, very unconnected to what we're talking about everyone here in fact most of the lefty people in this panel said that it was like oh you know maybe she should release a statement I, in fact that's what i said and i'm probably she did release a statement though yeah, it said so in the article yeah yeah i, I yeah, saw, I saw that at the end yeah that's 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 great um but yeah if like again what my my takeaway was she should have no problem with with distancing herself from this but i don't think there's anything wrong censorious or even emblematic of of a lack of devotion to rehabilitative justice which i really wonder if anyone on like on this panel really knows what rehabilitative justice actually means um, okay chill the fuck out okay yeah like she really condescending thoughts all the time at everybody. Wait, we haven't I, even talked I... about rehabilitative justice Wait. in any like serious type of way. Yeah, you I know. Well, that's not my fault. That's your people. fault. That's your fault for choosing. It's not no that. one's fault because it hasn't been the topic of discussion. So true. It's not no, y'all are getting pretty okay. touchy about it and talking about executing it's... people and shit. So I don't know. Well, that was. A, wait, wait, that wait. I'm sorry. No, 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 no,
Let it be known that I do support the WNBA. Now, Sako, if you wanted to talk, or I assume you're done, right, Demon Mama? Or yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Done is kind of I, I don't I don't mean to sound condescending. I just meant like if you finish. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, don't yeah, worry. Sako. What's up? Okay. Um, I mean, this this conversation has been all over the place, and uh, sometimes it's hard for me to follow along. So uh, I don't I don't think I have really any. Well, actually, actually, I, I kind of do. I kind of do. Um, but I'm trying to remember exactly what was said. Uh, but I was going to bring something up that I brought up in my opening statement. Wired is a new po- while, a while new you look that up. So CTV, so CTV was talking about, um, you know, how the left kind of contradicts itself about I trigger them by opening uh, rehabilitative ever. justice and was kind of getting on. Yeah, that I know. Point. They really like, me. It's funny. I literally okay. said in my opening statement that I live my life in conflict and contradiction. When you think about it, all people do that. So, mm-hmm. and especially, especially in politics, lots of people are just inherently contradictory or they conflict with their own ideas because not a lot of, not a lot of people. <sighs> oh yeah. They've been around this. for a little while. Saka, wait, this is super existential. I do of course, always appreciate philosophical mm-hmm. conversation. But could is, could you do your best to tie this to the conversation directly? I would appreciate that. Oh. <laughs> and while you think about that, uh, polars and frames. We'll start with polars, just, uh, and then I'll immediately throw it over <laughs> you, frames. I know you had your hand up. Uh, oh, no. have... I was waving off my brother. Sorry. Oh, okay. well. Get out. Goodbye, frames, his brother. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> and polars, did you want to say something while Sako yeah, takes for that? Politics is growing. It's good. Yeah, people so, are excited yeah, by it. That's a good thing. Sure. Yeah, she's uh, but basically, yeah. I don't. I don't know where this conversation is actually ended up going. I thought CTV was specifically trying to make a point, but then it kind of got off to some really weird tangent. Um, I think we should probably <laughs> recenter and talk about whether, um, <laughs> whether, if we want to take this down the direction of whether like past individuals <laughs> who have engaged in racism in the past uh, can therefore come out as like I'm having a good like, time so uh, far. People right? who can engage in society, I think that may be a better road to go down with. If that's the point that we're trying to go on, because like we've been going like I think someone else mentioned this, we've been going from like here to here here to here and it's like let's just focus on one area oh, so good, i'm probably going to recenter this um, sure, yeah. I, would, oh, I, think I would assume getting into that the majority yeah, yeah. Of sorry sorry i didn't catch up think that, you know people in We're the good. past who've been racist um who've done some really bad things at least ideologically can be adapted to new society i think where we disagree is like you know how much does it take right like how do we prove that this individual has come back and know. been we'll an effective Star, individual like, in society you gotta practice um, a bit. can they claim to be that good at the beginning of the time um and does uh, Chester Dole demonstrate that. I think that's a point you probably center on. I'm, yeah, I'm actually glad you did that because I was just about to do that as well. I guess, can we get that out of the way real quick? And anybody that is going to pick up the conversation from here, <laughs> it's totally open for free. I'm not like now going sure. to point. I guess, yeah. Uh, do sure. we think that Chester Dole's actions in the past should necessarily carry over into whatever activity agree, he's doing Danny. currently? And then second of all, what are we thinking about if we do think that those actions should carry over? What sure. do we think about those actions? Like, yeah, should we think- all right. Go ahead, has, he de- has he demonstrated anything to show that he has changed? I mean, this is this isn't a person that was like just a Klansman. Like he's been arrested for assault. He's led alt right rallies. I'm talking about he's he smashed someone's head into a brick wall during a uh, a woman too a bar fight. Smashed her head into a wall. Like has he shown anything to even show that he has changed? Like why? Are, yeah, like what steps has he taken sure. to show that he's changed? Um, Brent, the most okay, Brent, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, Brent, 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 can, real quick, can jump in. Paul can jump in. Okay, okay. Paul, 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 so go ahead. Paul, than Brenton. Yeah, so uh, Frames, from at least what I've seen, he said that he's like done a speech in front of black people saying how much he's like um, repented racism. I don't know how much I like would go into that um, or, or like what that actually means. But I think it's also really interesting, like, what do we define as, like, coming back, right? Like, coming back and engaging in society. Is it? I think that's, like, a really interesting thing to talk about because I know a lot of us probably on here, some of us may have, been, like, been engaged in, like, some far-right ideologies in the past. And I think we would like to think about, like, well, how did we come back from that? Like, how do we signify um, that we've, like evolved as people and does it have to be recorded by a medical professional is it like recorded by the actions that we've done um and so i i don't know how much chester doles has done i don't know that much about his life but i do know that he's he said that he's talked about that and he's done the american patriots thing but the unite the right rally was like three years ago um and that may be something to take into account because 
when I initially thought that, like, we mentioned that he had done crimes in the past, I thought, well, you know, like, as soon as he got in jail, he stopped, right? But, like, if he was always, like, with these same far-right far right ideologies uh, all the way up to 2017, that may be a little bit more difficult to demonstrate that he's been separated. And from at least what my, what, from, from at least what I've seen, it doesn't look like he's changed um, to a certain extent enough to, like, consider him evolved and into society. For sure. So I mean, I'm gonna I throw. Have Insta- I have the Instagram for American Patriots USA pulled up on my other computer right here. Y'all can go look at their their content over the last little while on Instagram, and you can kind of decide for yourselves. Seems like you're kind Could of you standard far right. You're you're kind of standard far right that? propaganda. Oh, I, Did put you drop the, that? I put the I put the username for, or on Instagram in the uh, the chat. Sweet, sweet. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna throw it back to Berto just because he didn't get to say okay. something. Then, I, then I'll go to yeah. you, Brian. I do see your hand up, and then I'll try to throw it back to Sako, then CTV, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Demon Mom. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll, I'll make sure I. Yeah. Sure. I, I, mine is brief. I would just say, like, I don't. <laughs> without doing a deep dive onto this guy's life and any kind of analysis, like, I don't think there's literally any way that we could ever possibly acknowledge or or really figure out whether or not he's reformed or something like that. Uh, I, I just don't really think that's even possible. Uh, but more to the point of like the original question, again, I literally think like he took a picture with her with the she's running for Senate or Congress. I'm uh, I can't at remember. This right um, now, by the way, he I'm took a picture with her. It looks like he walked up and he just uh, took like, a picture uh, like that. Wired guitar. That seems like the the extent Here, of their association. The so like the the deep dive analysis on his, on the reform on his reform versus like his past statements, which seemed like they were like reprehensible or not statements, his actions. Um, it almost seems like no matter what conclusion we come to, I don't really think it's even relevant to the, uh, the Georgia race or her as a Senator or anything like that. So we can literally talk about this guy all day. And it's an interesting conversation about whether or not people can be reformed and how we should, you know, judge whether or not we see them as trustworthy or anything. Uh, I really don't think it, it has any bearing on Georgia. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. a, I mean, that's a good point too. Like, I, I really don't think that the picture changes much, uh, but she has plenty of bad takes way well beyond or before that picture was taken for me to not like her. And I feel like the, the, the line in the sand has already been drawn and this changes nothing. Uh, I think Brenta, you, you asked like, how do you. Polars. Wait, I hate to do this, but Brian has been waiting for a while. Very patiently. Brian, did you want to, did you want to chime in on this? Yeah, so I think there's a really interesting conversation to be had around, like, cancel culture and especially, like, canceling by association. And I know Echoplex said something about being, like, the CTO of cancel culture. I I hate cancel culture, and I think it's gone absolutely way too far. But I don't actually think that politicians can be, like, canceled or are a victim of cancel culture because mm-hmm. what is on the line with them what is being debated is in one sense, their personality, their ethics, their morals, like who they are. So I think, you know, what they say and how they act is incredibly relevant to whether or not we vote them in or out of their position. And so I don't think that that has anything to do with cancel culture uh, because canceling somebody would be like, weird what happened to james gunn right like whether or not he can direct a movie well has nothing to do with whether or not he tweeted the f slur like 10 years ago now the difference here is that we're kind of using like canceling by association here where because a selfie was taken they suck at me uh of a person running for congress just with some guy i mean i think what brento said is very accurate like it looks like he just snapped this in two seconds she smiled and moved on it's not like they were posing for a photo shoot for the cover of time magazine right i think this casual link and then trying to cancel her by association is really weak and i think we can do a lot better especially when we're talking about like voting for somebody for senate um yeah i just think it's a really weak attack and i don't think it's going to have any effect if it does have an effect it'll probably mobilize the right who already hate like snowflakes and cancel culture and all this bullshit. But again, I don't really think it's going to, I don't think anybody cares. Snowflakes nobody, against nobody gives snowflakes. a fuck about the WNBA. Okay. Like you couldn't even okay. before, right. reading that article, no, no, no. Hey. before reading that article, demon mama could not tell me the name of 
the Atlanta WNBA team, and I don't think right now she can name two WNBA teams outside of that. I couldn't well, I have name to any okay. NBA teams because I don't watch sports, but all I'm saying is that on a pure statistical manner, you're wrong. So Yeah, no, actually, Demon Mama, yeah, if you wanted to respond in general, totally your time. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I don't know. You seem really, like, really, really banging on about that. I don't know. You, maybe you got a problem with women? I don't know. I'm banging. Um, yeah. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. It sounds like you might be having trouble banging. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> just saying, listen, um, but, but yeah, um, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem like from what everyone said here and from what the article says, it really doesn't seem like there's even an angle of attack here. It looks like some people have a problem with it justifiably. Um, I think if any, uh, major public figure, especially someone who represents people in the Senate, is photographed with a, a, a mo like a, a person who's been deeply involved with hate crime uh, groups, with groups that are specifically devoted to um, targeting and harming people based on their intrinsic identity. I think that's perfectly rational scrutiny to put on. I think it's really right wingers who tend to be massive snowflakes about this kind of thing because they're like, ooh, don't don't give any scrutiny to the people to the, the the politicians who we regularly make up completely baseless conspiracies about of about them drinking the spinal fluids of babies or whatever. It's like, okay, whatever. Um but the other thing too is that like I just did a like a, a casual Google search real quick on on this uh Chester Dole's person. Um, in 1998, he was in an interview with the Washington Post in which he said that he will take, I will be taking my clan robes with me to the grave, even though he's no longer associated with the organization. And then he appeared in a Nazi rally in Charlottesville, um, in 2017. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like that's a pretty fair reason for people to be, uh, very, very uneasy around someone like that. Um, and I don't think like there's this a concept of like rehabilitative justice where it just means you hug Nazis for fun because I don't know, apparently that's like the imagined version of what rehabilitative justice means. So I don't know. Um, none of this is particularly convincing to me. Uh, I think it's perfectly justified for people to have scrutiny on their uh, public servants. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Yeah. I, I gotta jump in. I gotta jump in a minute here, but I, you know, I just wanted to bring up, like, on the cancel culture thing. The problem I have with the discussion around that is, if like, somebody's gonna put their ideas out there, especially public figures or famous people, they shouldn't get fucking incredibly upset when other people don't like what they have to say and are, are, are voicing that. Like, if you buy that ticket, you take that ride. If you're gonna go out there and put your ideas out there publicly, you're gonna get what you're gonna get, and you can't be loud in the courtyard and then expect nobody to respond to you. I mean, right. It's just kind of. Sure. I got to go though because I have my own show to do. But I just wanted to say that real yeah. quick because that's like one of the things I, I kind of bang on about a lot is that cancel culture isn't real. It's just people saying things and then other people saying things and then I know, more it's people hard criticizing to tell more me people. On the left and I think one. it's kind of stupid. If you don't want to be criticized, then don't say anything. You can it's just hang out point. with your family and your friends and do what other people do. But it was good meeting everybody. A couple familiar faces. Good to see you, Brento. Good to see you again, Freems. And uh, yeah, good, okay. thanks for having me on Wired. It was good to meet yeah, the no, new no. people. Maybe uh, maybe next time I'll be able to stay longer. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Take care, man. Yeah, I think I could oh, also please. comment real, okay. real quick Wait. on um on yeah, yeah. Uh, on on cancel culture. I forgot people were talking about cancel culture. Uh, I I find the conversation around cancel culture to be really frustrating because people mean all kinds of different things when they talk about cancel culture. Um, I guess I usually just ask people to be more specific because most of the time people say, "Oh, cancel culture," and they say this horrible shit has happened, and then you ask about what horrible shit happened and. It's usually nothing there. Like, I, I feel like there's some examples. Like, I, I think there are certainly examples of, like, um, like fucked up power imbalances between, like, public figures where, like, a, uh, a huge – a person with a huge following, like, blows the shit out of somebody with a tiny following and, like, it ruins their life. Um, I think that sort of shit can happen. Um, some people would consider that cancel culture. Other people wouldn't. Um, so I don't know. It all depends on what people mean by cancel culture. If we're going to talk about cancel culture, it would love, I would love to hear what people are actually talking about. That is a very fair point. Um, real quick, before we do define it frames, did you want to say something disconnected to that? And then I'll move it over to polars. And then I think, yeah, we should try to recenter the conversation on canceling or rather on defining cancel culture. Sure. Yeah. I also want to say when we're talking about like politicians and people that are in positions of power and making our laws, they should be held to a pretty high fucking standard. I agree. Like it goes like beyond just cancel culture. Like it, you can't be like, Oh, this Senator, like, said something racist you guys are just trying to cancel him don't try to ruin this man's job like these are lawmakers like these are people who decides 
how people live and what I don't know. It's it's wild to just chalk it up to cancel culture. For sure. Polish world, did you want to say something? Yeah, so I think Brento um Brento was asking, um, like, how would you even know? Like, how do you even demonstrate that you've, like, changed, right? Or, like, how do you even get close to it? So I would say for a character uh, like Mr. Dole, it'd probably be leaving this specific organization, the American Patriots. Um, if he wants to demonstrate to himself that he doesn't hold that the, uh, those beliefs, that's something yeah, different, like frames right? Too. If he wants to demonstrate publicly that he doesn't frames hold those like beliefs, he may be able to engage in local forms of activism for the things that he wants, like, uh, like held against. Um, that seems to be a pretty common thing is um, whenever certain people engage in like bad behavior in the past, they'll come out and they'll work with organizations or do activities uh, that may address like leaving that like like uh, that, those pipelines. Right. Like um, a really big thing was like the alt-right pipeline online. And a lot of those same content creators have come out and talked about how they got out of that situation. How they done this, this and that. And they they kind of give their, their spiel on it. Right. So that may be something that he could have done. Um, but I think this cancel culture idea is somewhat interesting. Um, do you, like I, I have some interesting takes on it, but like I'll, I'll let everyone else go through what they what they believe sure. cancel culture is. Sure, yeah. So Brento, and... anyone else? Sure. I do uh, want to eventually. Go ahead. I want to move it over to CTV eventually in Saco because they've been very quiet. Um, but yeah, your floor is yours, man. Okay. Uh, so as far as cancel culture, um, I would say like how it seems to be practiced, like you know. Um, before Equiplex left, I, I would have liked to have responded to what he was saying, like, more directly. But he's not here, so I'm not going to, like, challenge it too much, uh, like, you know, since he can't respond. But uh, yeah. when he's saying, like, ideas, not wrong, people like saying things and then ideas like passing back and forth, well, that would be nice. But, like, cancel culture seems to be more like when someone says something someone doesn't like or they disagree with, there's an attempt to destroy the person and not discuss the idea or engage in dialogue like if someone says something they're treated as like a heretic and then the person themselves is, is like really fun. is piled on or destroyed or tried to be like removed instead of actually engaged with and having like a discussion with them so it seems cancel culture seems more about getting rid of people and not talking about ideas do you have like an example of that that we could discuss because that sounds very vague to me right now um, well, James I think Gunn. that's say, say what James Gunn, the guy that was a uh, director oh, yeah. of Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, and then got canned for Guardians of the Galaxy three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that would be one. What was what actually happened there? He got fired uh, from his job because people were mad that six years ago he tweeted the F slur. Okay. To be clear, he did, did come back, he, though. Is he destroyed? He is he, like, he dead? No, so he did come back, but the problem isn't whether or not cancel culture did an effective job. It's, like, the intent with which uh, things happen there. And the intent was, this man said something we don't like a long time ago, so he should not have a position. Like, he yeah. should not be able to get work. And I think it's really weird to create that. So, first of all, this only happens to people that are famous, okay? It's really hard to, like, cancel any normal person. Although, there was that one lady who, like, went to Africa and tweeted, like, hope I don't get AIDS or whatever. Haha, ha, just kidding, I'm white. She kind of got her life ruined a little bit, too. But for the most part, this only happens to famous people. So, uh, what I'm trying to say about this, there was just, it, she was some nobody. She had, like, 50 followers or something. But the point that I'm trying to make with this is like hmm. you're trying to have punitive after. actions taken against individuals for things that they say. And so what you're essentially doing is trying to create this class of like untouchable individuals who should like you shouldn't be a director for movies. You should just go get a job at McDonald's. Right. Or you shouldn't be a person in but public he's still image. A director, isn't he? just, and he's still it like wasn't effective, but that was the intent was to get him fired. I mean, I don't know. Most yeah. of the time that I hear we prosecute I mean, people that fail to murder people for attempted murder. So in the same way, you, cancel you really culture just because he did a thing? shitty job. Do you really think? No, that, it's like, not the same thing. It's an analogy, it's even, but the analogy really is it's not even a good analogy though. Like, like I don't know, because like I think of another like when I think of an example of cancel culture, there are a couple of things that like come to my mind. Like one of the things that comes to my mind is like the time, um, the time that uh, Mike Cernovich, that like right wing neo Nazi guy, um, tried to get Sam Cedar fired for basically the exact same thing, and then they actually succeeded. A bunch of right wingers wrote letters to msnbc and got sam cedar removed for one day before they let him back on his job ended up not really doing anything they kind of got to the bottom of it pretty quick and then like other examples like more serious examples i think of cancel culture are like um when like 
uh like female politicians have like their nudes leaked and uh like katie hill like had her pri private life like blown up into public and like a bunch of like um weird school marmish like uh extremely anti-sex people like invade her private life like that's the kind of stuff i think about when i think of cancel culture but i don't even know like is that really culture like who who really determines that i think what most people refer to is like something happened on twitter that i didn't really like and um i always wonder like I don't know is this really like something that's hugely politically relevant because it seems to me to kind of be like a boogeyman of like internet culture warriors and i don't know i just don't find that very compelling or concerning sure um if nobody i guess if nobody in particular has anything to respond to that uh, i do kind of want to move over to defining what we think cancel culture is probably a little bit later than uh, we should have been doing i think we should have really defined this earlier but what do we think cancel culture is starting with ctv what do you ctv in your own words how do you define cancel culture if you could for us uh oh i don't know that you can define it other than just <laughs> people want you know deciding that they're Smoke going to coming uh, out the ears stop following people or you know start encouraging other people not to follow them you know sure. uh, the real world consequences for jobs and stuff i mean basically everything that everybody else has already talked about okay okay nice so excellent excellent <laughs> definition okay uh freems how would you define cancel culture um i guess it would be to ostracize someone from either you know entertainment social media employment in general uh oh boy, kind of cut them out for the really shitty stupid bad takes mm -hmm. uh real quick i do want to welcome what's up tiberius how are you doing uh he's going to be joining us taking echo plex's place um we're just covering up the little bits of the of this last topic on cancel culture and then we'll move over to the puerto rico subject uh, um but yeah uh brian how would you define cancel culture i'm just curious i think cancel culture is when um groups of people online who belong to some type of group be it like gamers or women or white people collectively get together and try and weaponize outrage to take punitive justice into their own hands against an individual for example people that don't like those who use the f slur trying to get james gunn mm -hmm. fired from his position mm -hmm. whether or not that was successful now the sock goes back Sorry. what's the f slur uh, i'm not uh, gonna say it because tos yeah, that's what we should say. Yeah. are we talking, talking about hold on so are we talking about the same word that the british used to call cigarettes Yes. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, yeah. man. Okay, not that one. Well, hey, um, get mad at all the cancel culture people because we can't even use it in reference here on a debate show. Well, Anyways, there's not have any Brits that are smoking a fucking cigarette, oh, right? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> hey. Demon, how would you define cancel culture? Uh, cancel culture. Well, I don't know. I'm like a veteran of like, like I've lived, you know, being 30, I don't know. I don't know how old everyone else is here on, on this panel, but I don't know. I've lived through a couple of waves of like moral panic, um, propaganda to me. It just seems like a boogeyman that means whatever you want it to, uh, in the moment, usually used by conservative pundits to describe, uh, people getting mad about something on the internet and it's not really clear why they're mad, what's wrong with them being mad about it, or what they're doing. Sometimes uh, people will like, um, like pick certain specific examples. And I'm again, I don't know. To me, it just seems like the, literally the same thing as um, political correctness, which was the old boogeyman that basically meant the exact same thing. And they would do jokes just like the one that you just did about, oh, we live in such a time you can't even refer the slur. Well, I mean, I can because I'm on YouTube. That's Twitter's problem. Or that's Twitch's problem, not not me. I can say as many slurs as I want to and do, um, but uh, uh, but but yeah, it's like um, I don't know. Uh, it seems like t if I'm gonna be completely blunt, it seems like fragile snowflake shit from the right, which is like nothing new. Yeah. Socko, yeah, thought... did you have? Any... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead first. I you yeah, haven't talked I thought, to you. Of a, I thought of a bad case of cancel culture. Um, whenever Colin Kaepernick got removed from the NFL for kneeling for the flag, that was a good case of cancel culture. That Fair. was, uh, that was an effective one, too. Yeah, was... yeah, he's making a shitload of money with Nike, so it helped him out. <laughs> <laughs> True. And then, Sako, did you want to define cancel culture? Or cancel culture um, 
See, I don't really have an opinion on cancel culture. I think the whole topic in general is just really fucking stupid and a waste of time. Um, Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I've oh. literally had somebody tell me, I, I've, because I, I've had these discussions before, and it's like, I've, I remember I specifically that. asking something, or, or asking somebody what, like, their definition of cancel culture was, and they literally told me, well, Seinfeld can't make gay jokes anymore, and it's like, all right, then. That's my favorite one, personally. Sorry, I don't mean to butt in, but that's that's one of my favorite ones. Fucking Seinfeld constantly talking about how his gay French king joke doesn't f- play well at modern college campuses. And it's just so it's so bad. That's the best example. Like, where I'm just no, like, yeah. what does this even mean anymore? I will agree that there's, like, something there in, like, the Kaepernick case. But, but like... Oh, can you agree with him, right? Yeah. No, no, no. But yeah, I just don't... Wait, wait, like. I mean, you have to let me finish my, wait, you have to finish my sentence. I mean, nice try at it, got you. But, you know, it usually helps if you listen to what someone's saying. Because I was gotcha. literally... Literally was about you to say... You what you were saying, David. Mama. <laughs> okay, wait, I know, let's 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 I know. Jesus. Um, but, you know, um, I was about to say, but I don't really know if that's emblematic of a culture. So I don't know if calling cancel culture is the right word. And let's not let's like not pretend here. We know that most people who use cancel culture are trying to refer to I don't know what did you just make a joke about? Oh, like oh, not being able to slay the f slur on Twitter. Or Twitch is an example of cancel culture. We know who that who uses this term the most. So like, yeah, like I just don't think it's emblematic of it. And I was literally gonna say that, but you know, you in your in your you know rush to get a dunk, you kind of tripped over your own shoelaces. But you know. no, it doesn't seem like that. Well, Freems, I was gonna ask you like. I mean, you were agreeing with Demon Mama, kind of, I heard you say, yeah, when she was making her point that, you know, like, you don't really think it exists, but then, like, like Brian pointed out, it's like, as soon as Kaepernick comes up, you're like, oh, yeah, that example does exist, and it's like, okay, but so you can recognize it on one side of the aisle, but you don't on the other? Wait, hold on. Wait, I I was the one who brought up the Colin Kaepernick thing. Sorry? I was the one who brought up the Colin Colin Kaepernick thing. Right, right. Well, that's that's the question, though. Mostly making a, a joke there as well, but uh, but I thought it was a good point, so I didn't take it as a joke. When did I say so cancel culture didn't exist? Demon Mama said it, and then I I, I maybe I heard wrong, but I yeah you know, I was watching the stream. I thought I heard Wait, you say I never yes. I said that when cancel culture point. doesn't exist. I just said that I don't think people know what they mean. It's a they... boogeyman. Wait, yeah, right. It's, it's a boogeyman. It's really it means like it's a, a buzzword. Do you know what that right. means? It's not a culture. It's not a so, culture. Uh, uh, Demon Mama, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. What I think Demon Mama was saying is, like, sometimes people will say some really bad, shitty things, get in trouble for it, and then chalk it up to cancel culture. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a really, really vague concept. I don't really know. Like, first of all, no one here has provided a consistent definition, which more or less plays into my case. Wait, wait. Buddy, you, I provided you, very- you provided your yeah. definition, which is in disagreement with, like, almost everyone else on the panel. Like the no. thing is that everybody had their own take on it. It's clearly first not all, like a it's clearly all, not a cohesive concept. I don't first know. Of all, well, we're obviously is this gonna be like is this gonna be like a four v one because y'all get so triggered no, by my fucking comments? No, 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 no. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. Let's let no let's let, no 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 not go ahead, Brian. Let's let Demon Mama finish your point. Then let's move sure. to Brian. And then if Brento, if you want to say something, then we're gonna go to Polar World and then we're gonna move to the next topic. Hey, guitar. Want... Guitar. Yo, what's up? I don't yeah, know up? what is going on with your mic, but you are yeah, it's definitely your mic because you are getting overtalked by everybody, right? Like I can't, I, I'm sitting here and I can't pull your voice out of a crowd, and that that's a real problem for me, right? Because if you're trying to get control of the room, I want to be able to help you do that. But if I can't hear you, that's a real problem. It just yeah. seems like at least can you guys. Can you guys not hear me? It I sounds like your mic is right breaking there. up a little bit. Is what it sounds like. You break up every time somebody else is talking while you're talking. I am stopping, like, when you guys talk. Okay, here, I'll just do it one more time then. So we're going to go to Demon Mama to let her finish her point. Then we're going to go to Brian. If Brandon wants to say something, he can. Then we're going to move to Polars just to give us the closing thoughts on this topic. And then we're going to move over to the Puerto Rican topic, with the, Puerto, the topic on Puerto Rico. That's the plan. So Demon Mama, you can finish your point. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what we what we were talking about. Oh yeah, people said I don't believe in cancel culture. I mean, I think that there's something that can exist like that exists like that. Like, I mean, again, um, I just don't know if anybody has a consistent definition. It doesn't really seem like most people have a con- like there's any sort of consensus on what this means. People seem to use it broadly. I mean, 
the Fox News and literally I watched the entire RNC this year and they brought up cancel culture like a hundred times with no specific definitions. And so I don't know. It just, again, I do believe it's a boogeyman. So I believe it exists in that way. But I don't know. When I think of like, when I think of like really bad examples of like this sort of vague concept of cancel culture, my, ex my examples never go to like Twitter. I always think of shit like, um, Remember when the Ellen DeGeneres, this was like a couple of years ago now. Remember when Ellen DeGeneres did a, uh, an ad for um, J.C. Penney and then a whole bunch of Christian advocacy groups boycotted the shit out of J.C. Penney, literally blockading their doors until they got rid of Ellen DeGeneres off of their ads because she's a lesbian? That is what I think of if I want to think of an example of something that resembles what people are talking about when they say cancel culture. And that didn't happen on Twitter. That happened in re the real world and involved religious groups like literally targeting someone and damaging their career irl not just random fucking people getting mad and posting memes at each other on twitter sure so brian if you want to respond to that that's not understandable or brenton sure so, so cancel culture okay mm -hmm. okay what we're talking about is a culture okay an attitude which has been created especially online where groups of people think that they can weaponize outrage to take what is in their mind justice and see that change happen in the world, okay? So right-leaning people thought that it was immoral and wrong for Colin Kaepernick to disrespect the military. Mm -hmm. They were very effective in getting him blacklisted from the NFL for life, okay? So that's an effective weaponized outrage case right there now there are right-wing cases and left-wing cases too okay like destiny arguably got unpartnered got revenue taken away from him because he aired in a, a an opinion and a grievance that is politically unpopular on twitch so there are cases where groups of people weaponize their outrage they use their outrage to wrong another person whether or not that's for just reasons or unjust reasons. And I think that's a very consistent definition of cancel culture. I think it's one where we can all find examples on both sides. And I don't see how that is like vague or oh, I just, don't care just my that. definition like or whatever, yeah, because you can see it now in the age of social media in a way that you never saw it before. Or if you did, again, it was only for public figures like elected officials who, again, I said I don't think can be part of cancel culture because what's on trial is their person. Okay. Uh, At the risk of expanding the conversation again, um, I do want to say real quick, Brento, I imagine your thoughts on the issue are similar to what Brian said or yeah, how we define cancel culture. Uh, I, yeah, and uh, I think it exists on both the left and the right, and I think the Colin that. Kaepernick example Here, is save, a good example. I'll save that question for uh, And I think that um, the fact that we're on a panel with multiple different people who also have like conflicting, you know, uh, viewpoints. That's, that's something we should expect that we're going to have conflicting viewpoints. So I don't think it's, it's, uh, evidence that cancel culture doesn't exist, that we don't have a shared definition. We're on here arguing about these types of things. So, you know, if we don't have a shared definition, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Of course. It doesn't mean sure. it does either. So, but that's, I don't believe that's so a point. You just against said it. nothing. I mean, sure. And then Polars, I did say I'd let you have the last word. I'm sorry, Demon Mom, I know you had your hand up, but I do want to at some point give some amount of credence to these other topics because I really want to talk about the Puerto Rican oh, no. uh, conversation. We'll so, get you another one. Polars, oh. you get the last word on this. We'll get you another one. So don't worry. I think to, to answer the initial question, I don't think we're in disagreement in the aspect of, you know, well, I don't think this is going to have that large of an effect on the Georgia election. Um, now, when it comes, should she be impugned if she knew? Um, probably I, if she knew that's something different, but it doesn't seem like, she yeah, I did. think he drinks out. I think he's drinking alcohol. Person. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think we're, we're all going to agree on that aspect that, you know, she really didn't know we shouldn't really hold her as accountable, but, yeah, we'll talk a little um, bit about if we really want to like actually get on Kelly Loeffler for engaging like really bad behavior. Um, there's so many other things that Maybe seem to be much P. more effective and are much more uh, reflective of her character. Um, with her engagements in the Senate and the short time she's been there and other allegations that have been thrown at her. Now, when it comes to cancel culture, um, it seems like uh, this is a very, like, 
this is a very, very contested aspect here. We're having like a semantical um, debate here on what it actually is. And I think Rento Box is kind of right to a certain extent. Um, just because we necessarily disagree on it doesn't necessarily mean that like it doesn't exist. What we probably need to what, what we probably need to focus on is like what do we actually consider cancel culture, right? Like, is it the aspects of you know, well, like you know, some small time person on Twitch uh, like got banned, or is it like public figures uh, getting deplatformed? Now, I think the really important thing to actually address is is it just is it right? Should we take these like uh, these specific individuals off their platforms? For how long um how much like how much power should be targeted at them because to a certain extent i think yes um sometimes public public outrage is the only way to hold individuals accountable sometimes it's True. overused True. um and, and i think that's a much more interesting way of looking at it and it's a much more nuanced topic because we in reality can't vote on it right like we're not sitting here voting on which individuals can cancel public uh, like public platform not public platforms but the public Cancel can engage course, in yeah. in ways that we don't really like like I was canceled enjoy, cultured by the really justice department so that's and something the IRS that's, that's a completely long and in-depth conversation um but those are probably my thoughts on that and i know uh, why i'd wanted to go to the next topic so yeah uh, real quick i will say we are the public so in some ways you could argue that we do have a voice in our social media presence so despite the fact that it isn't something we make a formal vote on, um, it is still something that we do have, I guess, if you want to take the, the, the super libertarian argument, you vote with your wallet. Well, in this case, you vote with your outrage. But those are just the closing thoughts on it. Um, I, again, I really do apologize. Mom, if you have like a, a quippy one-liner, you can even make it an insult if you'd like. I'll let you say it Oh, on the, uh, on the topic. No, I was just like, I had more, more things to say in general, but we can move on to the next topic. I mean, I just think that like one small note, like the destiny situation to me does not seem like a particularly good example of of, ca yeah. of cancel culture. Yeah, you're a boss, you're... Wait, what no, that, wait, no, wait, because wait, what does that have to do with anything? Are you are you like actually? Brian, wait, you Brian, said I could have an insult. Are you actually that dumb? Or was or was that a joke? Was that a meme? Wait, that Were you memeing before you? Got, and that's what you decided to go. Yeah, with? yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Wow. Um, but I can I can I, I can back I, it up. I, I, do you know yeah, anything guess, about the situation? I should be to lower wait, my wait, 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 wait. Oh, I know, I know. It's you one, one line is too much. I just want to say, Brian, you definitely brought that. Wait, hold up, Brian. You definitely brought that up like completely out of the blue. It was very, very quick. I, I was going to let it slide, but seriously, though, like I do think there are very legitimate reasons somebody could argue that Destiny got banned, even if it was off plat for off platform comments, because I think, uh, I don't know. We could have our own little separate debate panel on this, but I don't think it's as easy as just to say, oh, Destiny was also a victim of cancel culture, okay? Um, the dude literally justified, um, you know, a shooter. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily know if that would... Don't, I don't know if the way that you interpreted that in, in, your, in your explanation of cancel culture was... Uh, hey, listen, honest. like it or I'm just not, gonna say that real quick. all I'm going to um, say here on this part is that, listen, like it or not, I don't, th I don't think it was, like, good that he got removed from the platform anyway. I literally said this in my conversation I had with Destiny. Um, but, uh, but he violated the TOS. Like, is that, that's like a big deal. And he did that in front of thousands of viewers. Like there are going to be people who are going to report you. That's not weaponizing outrage. It's you breaking the TOS. If I drop a, a fat slur on, on Twitch, I'm going to get, get banned too. Just how it goes. And I'm just saying that wasn't really essential to my argument or anything. Uh, I, I don't just know. Thought... You, 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 you wanted to die on that hill. You wanted to try and get in your little dunk on there and you didn't really succeed at it. Did you? It actually wasn't okay. a little Whoa. It was a pretty big one that kind of jumped from half court, Wait. like like face jam, like fucking stretched his arm out, dropped that shit in. Right, Damn, and the then right has some there, low standards. Oh, see that that was the problem is that I expected a better joke from you, Demon Mama. I had higher expectations, and I had to lower my expectations now because eh, you, you know I don't want to waste don't want to waste the good ones on people who don't deserve it. <sighs> All right, so on November third, Americans voted. This is not. Like if you keep like I'm pretty fucking like happy. I'm fucking high as fuck right now. And if Obviously, you can't make that's me laugh, incredibly failing, clear. That is really clear failing. to everyone who's watching. Jesus, I know, and everybody knows me. And they're like, if you can't even make CTV laugh, and he's a pretty laugh happy fucking guy, perhaps you need new material. Well, listen, I know that it's, it's I know it's really hard. Like you like usually like the Paul Blart style, like fart humors. I could make a fart noise into the mic if you wanted. That might make you laugh. Maybe we should bring on comedy greats like Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> right. So the only thing that I wanted to say about the whole oh, sorry, yeah, uh, get her done. There you go.
nobody actually looked up American Patriots USA to see what they were talking about. And the one person that even mentioned it was that Alex, and what he actually, said we, was, we literally was all did. far right propaganda. But when I look at it, what I see is the, the banner across the top of it says God, family, country. It's got uh, people like Larry Elders, uh, Dave Rubin. I mean, these people are all over this thing, and those are pretty left leaning people, right? Or at least they wait, used to wait, be. Are you, like are you joking left, right now? The left, left lean, right? There was, then there was that thing, right? See, so I, I, it doesn't seem, it seems like it's pretty, pretty like right now. Wait, 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 real quick, who do you define as right wing? I'm just gonna have to start meeting people. I don't, I don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it. I hate to be that guy to mute, but I, I, I feel like we have to move on to the next conversation. Otherwise, we're just never going to get there. So on November 3rd, <laughs> Puerto Ricans voted in favor of becoming the 51st United States um, and elected a pro-statehood uh, Pedro Pierluisi as their governor. What are our opinions on Puerto Rico gaining statehood? Should it happen? Does the United States stand to benefit? Does Puerto Rico stand to benefit? Would this decision demonstrate a pathway to statehood for other U.S. territories such as Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, the Virgin, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, the Dominican Republic, etc.? I want to start off with Tiberius because he did join a while ago, and I know he's been very interested in topping on this particular subject. How are you doing? Uh, Tiberius, by the way, before you do actually give your thoughts on this topic, you're totally more than welcome to give your introduction as a broadcaster because I know you do. What's up? Uh, hello. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Tiberius D. I'm the host of a so podcast named uh, Geopolitics with Tiberius D. I also do open panels on Twitch. Um, I would usually a little bit, excuse me, I'd usually be a little bit more concise, but I was literally going to sleep when Wired's like, hey, you want to jump on? So I might not be at 100% here. That. No, no, you're cool. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, I might not be 100% here. As far as my own personal thoughts on Puerto Rico being a state, I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, the only territory that I've actually been against being a state is uh, D.C. I think it should be part of Maryland, but uh, that's a different conversation to itself. Um, I have no problem with the U.S. territories becoming states. I, I don't see why we should hold it back. I know it's going to screw the Senate up, but eh, hey, you know, whatever. Uh, actually, I think personally right now is the best time for that because the political parties are starting to realign where it looks like we're going into the seventh party system. And better now while the coalitions are moving and people are changing than whenever it's already established and we're having that political fight. So I'll pass it off to the next person. Sweet. Yeah. Um, I actually want to, again, go out of order here. So I want to go over to Brento, if that's okay. Brento, what's up? Do you, what do you think about Puerto Rico becoming a state, et cetera? Um, yeah, if they want to be a state, uh, if they vote on it, I think that's fine. I think uh, that would be great. They should affirm it. Um, the only thing I really know about that, and not even say that I really know it, is just the only person I know who has any kind of intimate knowledge of it uh, is um, Pixie. Pixie, yes, and uh, she says that basically within Puerto Rico, and I, in reading the article that you linked, uh, you know, prior to the the panel, it said I think the vote was like fifty two forty eight. So it is contentious. It is like split within the country, right? There's a majority on as far as what what you uh, what you linked that uh, for statehood, right? But it's obviously contentious within the country because. Uh, according to Pixie, and from what I, it makes sense, the people of Puerto Rico actually have like a, a belief in their cultural heritage. They like being Puerto Rico and Puerto Rican, and uh, they feel like they would lose some of that. They like Puerto a degree Rican of independence uh, in their identity, and they would feel they would lose some of that uh, in statehood, which is potentially true. That might happen over time. So uh, I think that's that's part of it. But otherwise, yeah, if Puerto Rico became a state, uh, that would be a thing that would happen, and that's yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. Whole, take on that fair they, enough they fair enough pullers what do you think about that would uh i mean first of all do you support puerto rico becoming a state do you think that there is some risk that uh you know puerto ricans native puerto, oh, puerto ricans fine. confer uh, be by yeah, becoming probably. a state do they lose some sense of identity etc what are your thoughts on the issue um i i think it'd be a great idea for puerto rico to become a state um now is it good for america well depends on who you define as America, okay? The Democrats, mm -mm -mm, they're going to love. You know what? I'm a love, I would love to see Puerto Rican senators and congressmen, okay, boosting that I, I have a pretty strong idea that they're probably going to be voting Democrat uh, when it comes to who they're going to send to Congress. And Let's I'm in favor this. of that, I got right? Some, I got some good takes. I also think that, like, when people are talking about maybe why some Puerto Ricans don't want to be, like, a, a part of the, part of, like, be a state, be considered a state at least, uh, is the same reason why so many quote unquote libertarians go there. They don't pay federal income tax, to my understanding. And, you know, like that may actually be something to take into account. Um, personally, I think they should be a state. I think they should be able to vote. Um, thank God we won't see any of those cringe libertarians talking about, I don't want to pay federal income tax. I'll just go to Puerto Rico. Okay. 
We have to give them a place where they can't go and not pay federal income tax, okay? That's what I care about. That's a positive Boosting. for them becoming Yay. a state. Uh, but in all honesty, I think it'd be Boosting. really, really – I, I think Monkey. it'd be a really good Appreciate idea it. to allow them to do that. Now, um, the actual legal stature on how to become a state has been relatively consistent. It's just whether um, this will spark like a political movement in order to engage with that, right? So whether Cong like uh, whether it goes through um, – whether it goes through Congress is going to be something that's really different, right? Uh, I'm pretty Will sure this they'll, inspire they'll lean uh, the West Virgin Islands to therefore apply for statehood. Um, it really mm -hmm. just depends on the political climate and whether this actually inspires the movement. It really won't change the way that states actually get like um, territories apply for it. But I think this may be able to establish a uh, a way to um, to actually become a state politically with like political capital. The Republicans are probably not going to be in favor of it. Uh, because we we all know the reason why. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, it's not going to be so good for them. Um, so I think I personally think that they should. Um, yeah, that's my position. Wonderful. Uh, CTV, what are your thoughts on Puerto Rico becoming a state? Do you think they're going to vote blue no matter who? Um, do you th like the idea of absolving yet another tax haven that uh, libertarians such as let it be known I did try to get last year's your name on, uh, but yeah, libertarians <laughs> such as last year's your name uh, to escape to to pay no income taxes. What's up? What are your thoughts on this? Issue? Uh, well, it, Fuller kind of laid it out pretty nice, but you know it, it does uh, it does more for for Port for Puerto Rico than it would for the United States, right? Does so, it? I think so. I okay. think right now, like Puerto Rico is set up pretty well as far as its citizens are concerned, right? They don't pay federal income tax. They, Aww. you know, people that are born in Puerto Rico Puerto can easily come to the United States uh, yep, and and become a, a, a citizen of a state. Right. And now, like, so it's it really it seems a lot more to do with budget and money than and then probably budget and money is probably going to be at the top of the list of things to talk about. And then it's probably it going to have something to do with, you know, uh, there being 51 stars versus 50. Right. Because we've mm -hmm. had the same number for a while now. People like there's a few generations of people that have kind of gotten used to the seeing that. So then there's like a conversation about that as well, because to just just say, oh, yeah, we're just going to do it. Well, that's pretty, pretty big part. So I think that there's some nostalgia there. Uh, Are you arguing CTV, that you think that like there's some part of American culture that's lost by adding an extra star? Is that maybe what you're saying? No, to? no, I think I think that it, there's a much broader topic actually um, to be had depends. as far as the government I don't think I've ever had around I usually the world. And the, in this specific case, the federal government I usually screen them. Before uh, that. But I don't know that, that that's something that we'll end up getting into, but it's got a lot to do with making the federal government something that other nations around the world would want to be a part of, like to actually sell ourselves and, and actually get the federal government out of a lot of issues uh, and handling them so that other nations would want to join in because they had complete freedom to be able to handle these issues inside their borders, like the drug war. If they wanted marijuana legal, why should the federal government here be able to say that as a part of you joining? So okay. that's kind of where I feel like a lot of this discussion needs to go. And then, you know, you could also go into, because there were so many states added back in the day, especially in the Northeast yeah, uh, during know, the time leading up to the Civil War, yeah, that maybe there's a time now to actually start combining some of those smaller states into one bigger state as we make a transition. Right. So I don't know. There's a lot of things, okay. a lot of different ways you can go with it. Fair enough, fair enough. Demon Mama, what are your thoughts on this issue? Just in general, Puerto Rico becoming a state. Do they deserve independence? Is that something that uh, I, I shouldn't say deserve? I mean, is that something that they want even, uh, you know, or should they be combined into the union? Does it confer advantages to them? Yeah, sorry. Abolish the state. All you have to lose is your own chains. Um, no, but but honestly, um, like I think this is a really, uh, it's not as cut and dry of an issue as I, I think it seems sometimes. Um, Puerto Rico uh, has a lot to lose and a lot to gain from um, statehood. Um, now, uh, I think something. Uh, I think it's it's reasonable to believe that a certain amount of uh, certain amount of recent events um, may have, you know, brought people more over to the state side uh, or the the uh, the statehood side of the issue. I know that this has been um, an issue for decades. I mean, for a very long time, statehood has been a hotly contested issue in Puerto Rico. Sure. Um, uh, I mean, I I was. Uh, I almost, I almost actually almost married married my ex who is Puerto Rican, and her family was very vocal about their politics and very divided on the issue. In fact, 
Um, and one of the one of the issues with this is, uh, of course, like uh, when I refer to um, recent events, I'm referring, of course, to um, Donald Trump's absolutely atrocious, inhumane, and frankly disgusting treatment of Puerto Rico um, during the hurricanes, um, basically leaving them behind. Um, and that's a pretty tough thing to do um, when uh, you have when they're a state. Or at least it's a lot harder. You have to end up with like a New Orleans type situation. There's a lot more scrutiny. Um, and um, to be completely honest, like I think that's a major concern. And I wouldn't blame a lot of Puerto Ricans for wanting to support statehood to avoid that type of disaster. But of course, there are other problems as well. Um, uh, you have to submit yourself to being um, potentially a part of a draft. You have to submit yourself to, of course, federal income taxes. You have to submit yourself to federal regulation. And these are these can be pretty imposing sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a complicated issue. with, uh, And I don't really think it's like a cut and dry, clear issue, um, especially because... Um, you know the history of the way that America has treated its t its territories has never been amazing. So you know mm -hmm. Puerto Ricans have a lot of reason to distrust the American state when it comes to um, you know wanting to be a state. But if they want to become a state, um, I will say one of the benefits is that it will be a lot harder for a uh, a president like Donald Trump in the future to neglect the people without it drawing the public's ire. Um, unfortunately, he kind of sure. got away with that in this particular case. Brian, what are your thoughts on this issue? Um, do you think that Puerto Rico would stuff. have a lot harder of a time being overlooked by so much of the, I guess you could say, national stage in times of crisis as a state? Um, in general, do you think Puerto Rico should even become a state? Why this happen? Uh, what's up? It's kind of a really complicated question because I have some I problems with the way big. that our government is set up right now and sort of the powers and privileges that are given to states individually um especially not really liking the oh, senate somebody else and is how this. it this takes me. away power from majority voting groups um you i gotta know, go to like the bathroom I'm from the state of california so obviously the fact that we have two senators and be right uh, back everyone i love you so does rhode island that kind of bothers me and that would bother me the exact same way if puerto rico was a state um i think that if the united states government has some sort of control over puerto rico that it also has some sort of responsibility to puerto rico and i think most of those responsibilities uh can be addressed whether or not they are a state um the fact that they weren't by donald trump doesn't really change anything because california which is arguably the most powerful state was left hung out to dry pretty much during the um huge fire season that we just had and even now, where for the first time during the winter season, we're going to have, uh, you know, probably the whole season as high fire warnings. So if California can't really get support from our political leaders in a time of crises, then I don't really see how Puerto Rico having two senators and five House of Representatives people would really change that. But I'm no expert on, uh, you know, federal government politics and all that sort of good jazz. So... I don't have strong feelings about it. I feel like the United States should treat Puerto Rico with the same respect that it treats all of its citizens. And I think that that is not mutually exclusive with, you know, not being a state. Fair enough. Uh, Freems, what's up? What do you think about Puerto Rico becoming a state? Yeah, I think Puerto Rico should become a state. Um, mostly so they won't get fucked by Wall Street as uh as bad as they are currently. Um, not to mention, even though they don't pay a federal income tax, they also don't receive any of the benefits that an American citizen gets awarded. Uh, and they more than make up for their federal income tax to their estate tax, which me find that worse. It's it's significantly higher than it is in America. Um, sure. So like where the laws are set up different in Puerto Rico, we allowed a bunch of people from Wall Street to go there. And they basically recommended debt. And I got a, I got a link here that I'll post in uh, the group chat. Sure. But it's um, sure the... the stuff that they're doing there is not legal in, in America. And it is, is basically crippled Puerto Rico. But that's also for that uh, with that happening. 
that's also the reason why they'll never become a state. It'll never go through. Uh, Puerto Ricans have wanted to become a state, even at a higher percentage than this in the past. This isn't like a new thing. Like, at one point, uh, like in the ninety percent of Puerto Rico wanted to become part of America. I think, I think the last oh shit, I think the last like seven referendums they've held on this issue, uh, Puerto Rican citizens have uh, voted in favor of statehood. So, friends, you are let it let the record show that friends is correct that uh, Puerto Ricans have wanted this for a while. Um, and then lastly, Saka, what are your thoughts on Puerto Rico becoming a state? Should they become a state? Um, should the United States let them in? Uh, I think yeah, it does, what's yeah. up? How, how do you think this would affect the world? So you're going to have to help me out here because I, I have a bad memory. There was this there was this country that was like founded upon this like weird Look idea. Oh, am I muted? Oh, no, I'm not muted. No, you're- yeah, there's, see, there was this country that was founded upon this like weird idea, and I, I have a hard time remembering it. It was like no taxation without representation and they like fought a war over it i can't remember which like country that was but uh yeah obviously um no i think puerto rico should should absolutely be a state not only should they be a state but guam as well um and i I mean i think if you really believe like the values that have uh well some excuse me some of the values that america was founded upon then you believe that yeah no taxation without representation. Make Puerto Rico a state. Make Guam a state. Hey, Chris. Uh, DC is a Chris little bit more YouTube of chat. a. After this, I don't know we'll this. talk. I don't know how I feel about DC statehood. I haven't like I haven't thought about it enough. But um, one thing I also want to add real quick. Um, people people have this like weird idea that Florida or excuse me that Puerto Rico would go blue. It absolutely would not. Mm, I would say that like most oh, of the we got time a, we got a go chud red, in chat, uh, especially in Blood certain after areas this. of Puerto Rico. I think they would probably be like consistently flip flopped. But haven't they historically voted for blue? I mean, yeah. So I do want to open it up to open open discussion. So Freems is talking about how they've historically voted blue. That comment also seemed a little bit aimed at Polish world. So yeah, by all means. Yeah. So uh, I'll also like to address the fact that like this yeah. is something that we got a bit like a we got a bit of time, but if you got time, come on in. At voting, um, it seems like parties that will parties that allow specific groups of people to vote and to end up getting their vote in the future, right? So what this would mean would be like um, um, I don't remember which actual party. I think it was the Republicans that let women vote, um, and hmm, panel Democrats. women about an hour. Was it the Democrats? Okay, yeah. Democrats. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, Tiberius got me on there. So, uh, women tended at that point to vote, like, uh, mainly, it seems like, uh, tended to have a voting block. I'm growing real towards, fast, nuts. Um, the Democratic or the Liberal Party at the time. Same with black people, and it's been one of the most historic voting blocks for a long time. Um, I would also say that, like, Brian brought up an interesting point. Like, California has all these senators, all these representatives, but they still don't necessarily get the help that they need. That would actually be a really different oh, situation for Puerto out? Rico, uh, because now... Um, that they have representatives being up. Being no, let's, let's up talk Congress, about it, Chris. I'd love to. The Senate. Um, not only will they get more attention yeah. on their political races and the issues there will be blown up. Oh, okay. Secondly, um, so you're just like so you're accepting of, like, that you've lost the argument, you coward. A trustee and a trust a, a delegate style form of like a congressman, a trustee being an another right wing coward party, uh, in in their like your legislative body and a trustee uh, all of them delegate cowards, is an indiv- every single one of them. individual that will actually represent the Already uh, values up. and the ideologies present in your area and fight for hometown. Um, this is a pretty common practice is that a lot of senators, congressmen will fight for Some bills that funny. are local they'll all at go home debate Vosh. They so debate that me. they'll actually end up getting reelected. Right. So they have to necessarily represent um, their ideals or they'll get replaced out. So that's something to, to worry about as well. Uh, secondly, lastly, CTV thought like CTV wrote up a point talking about how they don't necessarily follow federal law. Uh, the concept like the Supreme Court already ruled that they have to follow federal law. So they're following oh, federal law. Later. They don't pay taxes. Gonna... Um Chicken but out. they're still under the delegation of the federal government. So, well, of course they would be. So right? I was aimed at several people. Yep, sorry. Cope. I thought I thought TTV that you said um, that they did it, and like, and I was like, oh, that's that's. I was just I wish I just thought that you said that. So if you didn't say that, then we're all clear. We no, are, no, I mean like clear. it's a U.S. territory. It wouldn't fall under the jurisdiction of any state, right? Because it's a territory, so it would fall under the jurisdiction of the federal government. So this was actually something that was con- like contested for a little bit, and then had to be settled in the Supreme Court. I, I think I can send you the case if you want to see it. Yeah, yeah, I'd be interested to take a look at. I love those, uh, especially when Pisco do them. Yep, right away. 
Thanks, yeah. Um, while you guys are sending that back and forth, um, how do we feel about Puerto Rico becoming a state um, just based off the office of the referendum itself? So if the will of the people, even if it is by a fringe majority, seems to support the idea of them becoming a state, should that be itself, I guess, um, cause, I suppose you could say, for them gaining statehood? Essentially, the question of being like, does the does the will of the people confer enough of a reason to to delegate statehood to the sure. or to this? Um, I would say you could never possibly divorce that from the consideration, right? If they didn't want to become a state, <laughs> then the answer would probably be no. So the answer has to at least be yes, right? So you have to consider it. Then how much do we weigh in night. the will of the people in this instance uh, versus, say, the practicality, the legality, the um, the geopolitics of this of the scenario? Like, how much does it matter that the people themselves do seem to vote over not overwhelming, but but like consistently in favor of sta of wanting statehood? I think Puerto Ricans voting no is a much better reason for them to remain stateless than Puerto Ricans voting yes is for them to become a state. And I think. Like, I would just look at the United Kingdom in two different respects for why this is the case. Um, people have had a hugely hard time with the IRA up in the northern UK who want their own, like, independence from the UK itself. And so I think if Puerto Rico's citizens were sufficiently against statehood in a way that they might become violent against such a statehood, um, seeing as that would hamper their efforts for independence whether or not it would you know they could just see it that way i think that's more problematic than the opposite which is you know 52 percent of the people say we want to become a state you can tell right now that nobody's being violent over becoming a state and so whether or not we care about that or put that to a vote here i don't think change that no change in the status quo is really going to result in anything important and then furthermore I don't think that like the government of a people should really be as much up to the people. And I would look at the UK for that, uh, for Brexit, like what a terrible and stupid idea. It is an incredibly complex thing to separate yourself out from like what is nearly a global economy that has years of like trade deals and all this stuff. Like people, I don't think have the information, the time or the interest to really understand what it is and be, I think, Here competent in making a go. decision about like how their government is. You know, they can pick simple things like, do we want a Democrat or a Republican to represent us? But that's a far cry from like, I want to be a state or I don't want to be a state. So, Demon I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, Wait, I don't I know. That sounds more. like like sort of patently um, anti-democratic. I wonder how far you take that. Is it do you do you have like issues with the way that democracy is sorted out in our current system, or do you just believe that like people are stupid and need a king? I don't think people are stupid and need a king. I don't think that's what I said at all. Oh, okay. There well, are things. I was asking you for clarification. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have philosophical problems with uh, democracy, and I think that it is okay in the same way that a bunch of other governmental systems are okay as well. Oh. But I think the Republic system that we have now is far superior to like direct democracy. And I would say like a referendum, which is what Brexit was, like or office. just listening to the 52% of Puerto Ricans that had a referendum to join the state, that sort of form of direct democracy is a terrible way to make like really complex decisions like that. But just out of curiosity, when you say other forms of government that are like uh, pretty good, like what do you mean by that? Like what other forms of government do you think are? Pretty I think good? that's like way off into the weeds. Wait, like, I mean, it's, be, it's kind of important for the, you know, to understand where you're coming from, because like. Well, Brian, Brian, you did. You, Brian did. I think Brian did mention uh, representative forms of democracy being superior to like direct democracy. That was maybe one example, or I don't know. I'm just trying to make sure we don't. Get yeah, that is one example. But like, I don't think I need to go through every single example of uh, like a different form of governance to say that direct democracy is problematic in terms of like um, referendums on how your government functions. Like, I think that's a very specific case that I can say that direct democracy is weak in. And we can have an argument over that without me even having to get into, well, this is my ideal form of government, and this is how it deals with like uh, how a people are governed. 
Okay, yeah, I, I just am always interested in people's underlying philosophies when they, uh, you know, propose alternatives. I think home is tyranny of the majority for democracy, if that gives you any better mm -hmm. idea of, like, yeah, what I feel about. Sure. Um, fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, the other thing I just wanted to notice is, like, I don't think there's really um, good parallels here with, with Ireland. Um, like, Ireland was conquered by the UK and forcibly brought into the British Empire, and its people were horrifically mistreated and and then chose to fight back when when the top portion of their country was was uh uh thoroughly um what's the right word colonized by um the uk uh at the time so yeah i, I don't think there's really much of a similarity there um we i i don't know i i think there are some problems with the idea of um imposing statehood based on on a sort of referendum vote however um it does seem to be that the trending majority is is there my main concern uh, again i don't really care um so much what um determination um or what is written down in the books as far as whether uh, Puerto Rico is a state or not a state. What I care about is that we get to a position where they're treated like human beings and not a sort of expendable um, imperial, like 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 anachronistic colony that we can like extract shit from and send people to go visit to and have fun at. And then whenever there's a disaster, we just wipe yeah. them off. We just ignore them and give them like a, a complimentary gift basket in order to like make up for the thousands of people who died because of our inaction. Yeah. That's 100%. my main concern. What makes yeah, you think yeah. that if that was the biggest, the... that's the biggest reason people did want statehood for Puerto Rico is because they're, we're, we're treating those people over there like fucking terrible. And they're like personal piggy banks for wall street. Like this is, whether they want it or not, they're not going to get it for that reason. I feel like that's like a very important thing to talk about with this. Like there it's, that's why it won't happen because powerful people in America make a lot of money off of this, of them not being a state. Then Tiberius. Most people yeah. I, I just, um, forgive me for being doomer here, but even if they're a state, I don't see why that's going to change much of anything. Yeah. They might have more federal representation, but if government isn't working now, I don't know why the hell you're going to think it's going to work even more when you have, okay, because, yeah, you get your senators. Congratulations. Like, well, I mean, that's a big deal, though, right? Like, like here's the, here's the thing. Like, I don't, again, uh, I, I have a lot of um, problems with the way that the United States governs itself and the way that it imposes power. Um, however, um, having Senate representation means you have two, at the very least, and not including representatives, you have at least two very public individuals who can make mm -hmm. issues of the state they'll they'll have access instantly to the press they'll have access instantly to the inter internal channels in washington where they can bring up directly um as representatives of that state the problems that are going on in that state and while it certainly doesn't Im it doesn't make you immune to the to being ignored um i mean of course we have all kinds of fucking issues even with the states that exist right now uh california you know trump having a like some sort of obsessive hate for california um, you know, largely contributing to a lot of the problems they're dealing with right now. Um, but, but like stuff like that, you can never deal with anything like that, but you do in greatly increase your potential influence and your ability to access the public eye, which I think is important in this case. Um, people, as it turns out, don't like to know that their country is, um, causing a lot of harm. And um, if you have a senator who can go on to national news and actually have the ability to say, hey, I'm a senator, get me on the national news, and that will probably happen, they can talk about something that's happening and bring attention to it. So I do think that's something that shouldn't be discounted. Not to mention, not to mention there are laws set in America that protect us from the things that people in Puerto Rico are not getting protected by. If they got statehood, they would automatically fall under that. Like, can you give me a couple examples? Uh, yeah, I sent, all, I sent two articles into the group chat. Um, it's the way that they handle their debt. Um, let's see. I know that we've made, yeah, we have, Puerto Rico represents nearly 2% of the $3.7 trillion municipal, mun, ugh, municipal bond market. Sorry, I'm really stoned. I should have done that before I came on here, but, uh, uh, I guess that's going to be really complicated to get into. 
my thing is like i live in the most powerful state in the country like we're the leader in the economy we're the leader in technology we're the leader in entertainment like we drive this whole country and okay. donald trump did nothing right. Yeah, <laughs> Donald Trump did nothing. As I drove to work for like two months through a cloud of like haze, you know, and I couldn't California. do anything about that. And despite my senators making a huge fuss about it, but hey, beside the media, right, who are also making a huge fuss about it, like the federal government did nothing. And so I think the main thing is like who's in charge of the federal government and do their interests line up with helping American citizens and especially those who need help the most. And so I think part of the reason that you have problems like New Orleans and FEMA, despite the fact that they were a state too, is that you had a small government guy who cut tons of programs, who cut government revenue. Uh, Yeah, small government. I actually agree with you on that one, but uh, you know, this guy was incapable of helping us just like Donald Trump was incapable of helping us. He would do things like cutting the pandemic response unit and like other things like that. So I'm not so sure that like Puerto Rico's interest would be met by becoming a state any more than their interests are met by like having a president that gives a shit about them. So, you know, well, yeah. And I mean, I, well, by and I large, mean, I do agree. Oh, I don't. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We're going to, I, real quick, I just want to make sure Polish gets a chance to respond as well because sure, Polish sure. looked like he was eager to get in. Yeah. And then I'll go to the Puerto Rico. So it is almost inexplicably um, true that a state joining and sending representatives to uh, like to, to the Congress does have a measurable effect on the way that they're treated to a certain extent, right? Uh, for example, we can look at uh, Elizabeth Warren State is what is it again? What, what what's it? Vermont, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, right? Massachusetts. Vermont, yeah, Massachusetts, right? Yeah. Um, for example. Her like the, the needs that are met there, military spending with Raytheon is a really big deal there, right? Her being in the Congress allows for the aspect of well, um, Raytheon can like lobby towards anyone there, and she necessarily has to agree with like the the the, the, the big defense spending because you know what Raytheon and a lot of other major military firms are stationed there. She has to end up approving those budgets, right? We can also look at the most recent bill, um, uh, like not the like I don't. Uh, this is actually to be more accurate, but for example, a lot of like media, uh, Section 230, the initial Section 230 came from California, right? They're, like That's where a lot of media comes out of. Obviously, they're going to be in favor of that, right? Their senators end up voting in favor of legislation that, that pushes that for, uh, further, right? You're mm. right. The executive branch, yes, Good. that's going to be like heavily dependent on who you end up voting for. Um, but like your senators, your congressmen also have to be appealed to by the Democrats, right? Um, there are like multiple ways that bills are made. It can be... There's something called pot belly bills, right? Um, I think that's the term for it. But they're bills that are used to appeal back, uh, that are that are meant to appeal back to your base in your home area, right? So you'll push bills that will necessarily benefit those people. Um, to a certain extent, that may have been there have been multiple senators and con- like Republican individuals that have tried pushing bills that weaken the EPA, right? That's a way for them to appeal back to their like rural areas, their coal miners, uh, things such as and such as, same mm-hmm. with certain tax cuts. Right. So I would say that it most definitely has an effect because now you have someone to lobby to. Right. You have to be someone held effective. And in order for certain senators to actually work with the Democratic Party, they have to make exchanges. Right. If you want this health care bill, you have to necessarily appeal to me because I am a senator. And having one senator or two senators is the difference between having a health care bill and not having one. And as we've seen, parties will break out in the sense of like benefiting their own areas. Right. This is something that's happened um, mm-hmm. consistently. I can't like a. Uh, one of the major bills I think that comes to mind was like McCain. I don't know if I think McCain mentioned how like, for example, putting in and like repealing Obamacare would have had like a really negative effect on his area. And as a result, that was a massive changing vote. I think the real race big difference pros. is going to be on the Senate because now you have to be appealed to. Senate like races are really pros. tight. Um, so I would say this most inexplicably nope, has a difference on where spending up? goes, we where here? bills are passed, oh, the way the federal law is set up. It's most definitely a okay. massive, massive way that states will be like Puerto Rico would be able to engage because now they're aligned with the Democratic Party and that's a really big deal. It's okay. Sure. And Demon Mama, if you did want to respond to that, because I know that you had some opinions. Sure. <clears throat> um, I mean, there are a lot of problems. Uh, there again, there are a lot of problems with the way that the federal government asserts itself, with the way the state governments are handled. Uh, we we. I, I mean, I feel like 2020 is 
probably the perfect example of the fact that we don't really have a very good functioning system in the United States at the moment. Um, it, it's really struggling. Um, and, you know, but, but nonetheless, even with that in mind, um, there are some advantages to statehood uh, that are independent of whether, like, the president cares. I mean, and, and I don't have any illusions about, like, Puerto Rico's being Puerto Ricans being able to vote in the election like that's going to change the outcome of the election because of the the, the uh, electoral college which is fucked um but uh, the fact of the matter is that again having that public face can actually make a difference especially now when we're in such an interconnected such a media focused era um being able to have a representative who has those in channels can make a big difference um, I do think that like we're going to eventually have to address the fact um, that we have um, I don't know uh, what's the right word for it a derelict uh, a derelict federal government a federal government that's willing to play complete political partisan with American lives Donald Trump completely willing to ignore the needs of states whose leaders he doesn't like and and that led to people being killed as in the middle of this pandemic. We have a very interesting few years of reckoning um, with the legacy of Donald Trump and the Republicans in this country um, that I don't think is going to be uh, like put to rest very easily. Um, we have had what? I mean, what are we at now? Like 320,000 dead Americans? That's not just going to disappear. That that's going to need to be talked about, and that is the result of a federal uh, of a federal government that has functionally abandoned its post in every way imaginable. Um, sometimes worse, I would argue, has gone into direct, uh, directly um, maligning and harming um, certain groups of people in this country. Um, I'm so we, confused right now. Well, I mean, I don't blame you. You're usually confused. Um, yeah, because I mean, like, what what you're you're laying the case out for is for states' rights right now. No, but previous actually, to I'm that, not. you were laying out the case for an expanding federal government. No, so I, it's I like actually never you're okay that. with the expanding federal government so long as it's only your party. But if anybody else gets in control of it, all of a sudden you're jumping over to states' rights. So it's like actually, wait a second before you go any further. Like before you go on a monologue, can you tell you? me when I talked about the fe expanding the federal government? <sighs> Whenever you want the federal government involved in any of these issues, that when is did I for say that? an expanding federal government, right? When did I say now, that? Now, whenever you want the federal government not involved in something because you can see how inefficient it is, that's an argument for states' rights. What are you right? talking about? So, you, you still haven't told me what I when I ever advocated for expanding the federal government. Are you, were you not listening to what I just said? I was just listening to what you said, and it sounds like okay. you're drunk and you don't know what you're talking about. Drunk? Yeah, are yeah. you drunk? So, Yep, I'm drunk. There you go. Oh, I blame it on the booze because you can't keep up. The point of the contention here is whether or not uh, giving Puerto Rico statehood would be essentially expanding the role of the federal government. Um, I am interested in, of course, the two people who are debating this topic's uh, perspective on this, but I think maybe getting a third perspective on this uh, would help mediate the conversation. So I want to do this. This is going to be a beautiful way of, of, of solving two problems at once. Brento didn't get a chance to speak on this issue as much. Brento, how do you feel about the specific issue they're debating? Um, do you think that giving Puerto Rico statehood would be expanding the role of the federal government in the United States? It would be expanding the role of the federal government uh, simply because you'd be expanding it to a new territory. Uh, okay. I mean, but that's not necessarily the correct answer to the question. So I th that's not exactly, I didn't answer that right. Um, would you be expanding <laughs> federal authority? No, okay. I don't, I don't see this why you would joke. be expanding federal authority by adding another state. Whoops. He no, in fact, um, Whoops. I, I wouldn't make an argument for it weakening it, but, uh, if Puerto Rico became a new state and it had, um, states rights equal to the other states, which it would by definition, then uh no I, I don't think that would be expanding the federal government okay okay yeah um i was under the impression and 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 again i'm not like a, a 100 percent expert on this so please feel free to correct me if i'm wrong but as i understand it right now um as a territory um the federal government has an incredible amount of control over puerto rico and puerto ricans laws so i don't think that statehood yeah i don't think statehood would represent an expansion of the federal government at all um, in fact, it seems to me that it would be the other, the opposite. Um, but again, I don't really think that um, that is the main paradigm. I don't think that forcing all conversations into like federal versus states' rights is really what matters uh, most of the time.
because most of the time both of those things are completely moot when at the end of the day you have a country that is more than willing to engage um, in extreme violence to anyone that becomes inconvenient enough or uh, neglect anyone who becomes inconvenient enough. I think that overrides the issue of federal versus state rights and indicates um, much, much deeper issues in my opinion. Um, and I do think that that's a problem that we're going to have to deal with um, with COVID even, right? We've seen a lot of states have to functionally go their own way. Um, and even communities within states have to go their own way um, as a result of neglect from higher up or a result of just silence from higher up. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think it's very complicated, but I can understand why a lot of Puerto Ricans would find the offer um, interesting and attractive. Uh, I would I would say that it, in raw numbers, it is an expansion of the federal government. That's not inherently bad. Um, the example would be that, like, uh, there'd be more individuals on, like, uh, committees, right? That'd be an expansion of committees. That'd be the conventions of, like, oversight. That'd just be an ex – like, there, there'd be more senators. Uh, they There are certain aspects where like, now there's more federal income tax coming in. That's an expansion, but that's not inherently bad. And I, don't, I never like to frame it that way. Um uh, but I, I like that, that. That's a. I don't really see that as a valuable question, whether it's the expansion of the federal government or not. These are like the most fucked people in the United States, too. Just so you know, like their poverty rate doubles Missouri, and like my dad, okay, is from Kansas, and his state's motto was literally like, "Thank fuck we're not Missouri." Okay, their poverty rate is like twenty percent. Puerto Rico's poverty rate is like forty three percent. So talking about any sort of like revenue generating stream or whatever, it's not, it's, they're going to cost a lot more money than they, than they bring in. So it would be an expansion of the federal government's need if we wanted to treat them legitimately and with some sort of respect and help pull them up. But that's not fundamentally different than it is with like most states. Like I want to say New York and Texas and California, we're like, I mean, maybe Oregon and Washington, I don't know. Most states are running like deficits. They just suck up more federal funding than like they bring in. And it's because of these huge powerhouses that like we subsidize all those states. So, and they're still in fucked situations, you know, like all of those red states are uh, just bodied by, you know, drugs and lack of education and like all this shit, despite the fact that we pump like tons of money into them. So it's a really tough question. And if you want to talk about treating Puerto Rico legitimately in defense of critically thinking veterans thing, it would be an expansion of, um, of, of the federal government. Now I'm not saying that's bad, not saying it's bad. Just Tiberius, how do you, how do you feel about the expansion or I guess I the, feel like as, nobody knows what they're talking about on here, but I'll... um, the supposed expansion of the federal government to essentially, uh, incorporate, uh, Puerto Rico into the into the Desperately Union. Do you think that this would like? Do, do you think here. that this would legitimize that uh, the idea that the federal government is getting bigger, um, which is sort of a common talking point that we've heard from people? To be fair, on both the right and the left, but typically more of the right. I I largely want to copy paste what Polar was saying. I mean, physically, is it going to get bigger? Sure, but I mean, this is largely kind of squaring the circle here. With you have a an area that is federally administered with as a U.S. territory, and yet has no representation as a federal block. I mean, granted, you have like one seat in Congress, but it's a vacant or not a vacancy. It's a non-voting. Yeah, non-voting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's largely just like, hey, you know, I can tell you what I want, but I can't actually do anything about it. So. Yeah, I think this largely, if you will, squares the circle for this kind of territory. Uh, it's got a decent population base. We can go in the economics if you want, but uh, I don't have a problem with this. Um, like something that would kind of blow me away is something more like American Samoa or the U.S. Virgin Islands that are literally, you know, just pockets of sand in the middle of the ocean. But Puerto Rico is definitely not that. Yeah, yeah I agree, yeah. Rantana. I'm actually, if I could, just real quick, because I, I was trying to use this conversation as a as sort of a launching point for those states real quick, or for those special administrative territories real quick. How do we feel about, like, uh, that final question that I asked in the topics table of, like, the pathway to statehood for uh, certain territories like Guam, the Northern Mar uh, Mariana Islands, or the U.S. Virgin Islands, or like he said, uh, Tiberius said, uh, the uh, American Samoa. Like, how do we feel, how would we feel about those territories becoming states? Um, or are like... any, any different? Sorry. I think if Puerto Rico becomes a state, like it blocks those states even further, 
because really? America has to have a group of people to exploit. So you take away Puerto <laughs> Rico from them, they need to they need to move on to somewhere else. Like uh, yeah. we're, we're super under. I mean, I know I keep bringing it up. We are super underestimating how much money Wall Street makes off these people. And if they become a state, I was reading somewhere where they won't or they'll be able to now declare bankruptcy, which will also uh, yeah. affect that as well. What percent of Wall Street funds are like diverted two, in some way through Puerto Rico every two, year? Two percent, which is uh, I think six hundred. Yes. All right, I'll take a look at that right now. Well, it's two, um, uh, and that's in the municipal bonds. So it's like six hundred and ten million. Uh, one of them is a PDF too. There's more information in the, on it as well. Role in Puerto Rico's debt was is that what you're talking about? Yes. Um, Sako, if I could just ask Sako this question real quick, just to kind of incorporate him in the conversation. Sako, I do know that uh, you made the statement earlier in your opening statement that, uh, well, you kind of just, I don't want to say like blanketly, but like you sort of uh, declared that, you know, no taxation without representation, uh, thus Puerto Rico should be a state. I'm curious what you think about like, say for instance, Guam or the Northern Mariana Islands or the American Samoa. Uh, should this uh, same sort of motto or, or line of logic be applied to these territories as well? Should we give them state? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, Wait, I... Should they so choose? Should they so choose? I don't think we should forcibly make them states or anything, but if they see that they, if they say that, Hey, we want to be states then yeah. Add another start of the flag, give them a say in our elections, and that's that. Give them, I'm, I'm curious, would you go the extra step of like, you know, full statehood, like two representatives, or sorry, two senators, the equivalent population? Uh, pay, okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, Polars, I think you wanted to get in. Yeah. I can't remember if I. Okay. Yeah, so I kind of, so I think the best way to look at this is it seems like to the people, and to the voter base. Oh, am I muted? No, no I, 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 okay, okay. okay. Hand over so, there. um, I think Freems makes a really interesting point here, right? Um, and that's something to think about, right? Like, um, there'll be interests that won't want these areas to become states. But I think the value of this is, is that it's now much more present to the current generation that, you know, America can change, right? Like, you can add on states, right? Because 100 years ago, in the 1800s, this was a much more common, like, common phenomenon. It's put on the, like, on the radar of a lot of American voters. You could probably have, like, a mobilized population base to a certain extent. Um, but, like, getting the fight out going to be really difficult and i think that's something that like frames brought a good point to but i think it will put on becoming a state uh and like the concept of statehood and what it means to become a state is going to be something that's going to be much more in the face of a lot of people because if you go ask your average voter and they're like how do you feel about the statehood of puerto rico it's like i it's okay i guess right like um I'll ask what did donald trump say to the president of puerto rico when uh he called him up i um, I I don't know what that that quote was, but basically it'll be on the radar, and I think that's something that's really important, and that may make a difference in the future. So, Donald Trump said he like had a great chat with the president of Puerto Rico. Oh, like, this was, like, his <laughs> yeah. presidency. and so what I'm trying to say is like I don't even know that most Americans could tell you that Puerto Rico is like a territory, of the or even a, that, or, or is even a part, actually, like, is even a part of the U.S. Right? Like it was actually yeah. followed, and it was over fifty percent. Actually, uh, over fifty oh, percent. Over fifty percent. Surprising, so bad. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm actually impressed by that alone. <laughs> like, yeah, like, wait, come on, come on. You're like, I don't think most could even say it. Over fifty percent. Yeah, it still sucks. Like, come oh, on. No, 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 I'm surprised. <laughs> no, I'm surprised. But it's Fuck them all. <laughs> something else I wanted to add too. I know people keep saying like no taxation without representation. Um, and we talk about how like Puerto Rico doesn't pay a federal income tax. Um, they still pay an estate tax, unlike it is un unlike America, where in America it's not taxed over five million. It, that's not the case in Puerto Rico; it's all taxed. Um, not to mention they still pay Social Security and they still pay for Medicaid, but they don't get nearly the Medicaid funding and or or Social Security funding. So they're still paying in a lot of money and well, still have zero representation. There'll be more things. I know this. In is 2017, more. the New York Times said worry. nearly the last half one will of be Americans don't know Puerto Ricans are fellows. Oh, you're right. I just read this title super wrong. I'm illiterate. I'm sorry. You're fine. <laughs> also, I have a video. Which I couldn't find your name in Discord. I got a video for you if you want to watch it off the panel. Yeah. That kind yeah. of breaks down those uh, those articles a little bit better. Yeah, that'd be sick. Now, I kind uh, of want to share like a, 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 a fairly medium-sized idea. Right, I kind of sure. touched on it to begin with. 
Sorry, everyone. Don't worry. Like, try and spice I would love to see the federal government reduce in the number of things that it was actually involved in, because then it would be much easier to be able to include people a part of the idea that is the United States, right? Because then there wouldn't be an inherent fear that if we added too many people from other parts of the world, that they would then be able to dictate what happens to us here or uh, at the main 48. They got the, the idea started, right? Or the main 50, right? Because... That could be a legitimate thing if we started including a bunch of territories or nations from around the world, and then they could, you know, like, say we added the entire continent of Europe, right, and they had a voting block of this. But then they could say, oh, well, we're going to put this policy in, and that also has to be put in here because now they can they can overvote. Like, say they could overvote to, like, bring an amendment to get rid of guns, for example, right? So, like, I would love for it to be able to be set up in the way that it was originally intended whenever we were adding states, right? To where there was more state sovereignty rather than the federal government being the government that is looked to to solve a lot of these problems. And that seems to be what is like the default answer nowadays. And to me, it seems very anti-original idea of how this idea of freedom could actually expand across the globe by being able to add nations or states versus what we have now and then because of the federal government and the way it's constructed now it makes it Try really to hard follow. to get those gears to turn smoothly because there's the idea doesn't flow together because there's so much federal involvement um ctv i think so you mentioned like i don't know how applicable this conversation would be to that because i think there it doesn't seem to be very much land that isn't like um that is claimed by a country like Antarctica has already kind of been settled on in the sense of like, you know, no one else is going to place their flag, all, all that stuff, right? The only one that seems to be in that position is like some parts of like near the Northern Pole, but I don't know how applicable like that would be well, like. I'm not talking specifically about land that's not occupied. I'm saying like in this specific instance where just, we're talking just, about just, including Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you mentioned like U.S. like, for example, like that's a bit like um letting individuals be, like letting i mean letting territories become states is very different than letting other pieces of land become territories and that necessarily has to do with the fact that there isn't very much land left out in the world right there isn't very much that, that's left to be uh to be fought for to a certain extent not, i think he's talking land. about governed peoples in in place of land so yeah because like if the people of the uk like a... decided to vote that they wanted to be a part of us just the same way as they voted to be a part of the european union right because that's kind of like like yeah. i see the united states federal government and the european union as forms of say super governments over nations right and that's what the original idea of the states was is they were supposed to be independent nations working with this super government to to handle like naturalization and foreign policy and the buildup of the federal military in order to protect all of these nations so that's just kind of how it works in my mind so hey, before you off on him the uk was a bad example let's say like panama like where the united states built the panama canal and everything let's let's say the panamese people were like hey we want to join the u.s to give him like a more fair example oh. you know what I'm saying? um I, I i okay so I'll, I'll address what ctv was initially talking about i would disagree with that like initial ideal of what america was supposed to be with the articles of confederation um i think that that proved to be a very ineffective you talking about the original ideal? Talking about the Constitution is ratified seventeen eighty seven up to you, say sure, like the Twelfth so Amendment. Yeah. So so even if we I look at that example, right? We've had different periods of federalism, right? Um, God, I can't even. Basically, um, and it seemed to be that as time has gone on and as we've gotten much more advanced and like mm. we have better forms of government, I can't follow any of this like right these now. Forms of like confederations don't seem to be as super as effective. Um, and I think forward. like. <laughs> what, what, what you, you got rated? What? Yeah, I just saw it. <laughs> um, but Brian does bring up an interesting example, right? Like, do if we have like people in Panama, we worked on the Panama Canal, and they wanted to join the uh, like a part of the U.S. government. I think that's an interesting thing. I would have to think about that. But CTV, if that's the point that you're talking about, like, um, or like if we set up hypotheticals where individuals really want to join, I think that's really that, that'd be something to like really heavily think about. But I don't know it, to get to that point. I don't know if we'd have to like reduce the size of the federal government. I would probably say that you probably want to have a much more effective federal government in that sense, um, in order to keep like a, a union like that going, right? Um, but that, at least that's my position on it. Well, how do you make things more effective? You embrace authoritarianism. 
Well, no. No, I mean, there's I, I, the audience. I, I, I feel that like we're in, way. My, my brain no. is like, I, I feel like we're in like fantasy land right now where it's just like, well, what if the United States bought Russia? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, just bro. Get, he asked a hypothetical question. How do you make an efficient government? And what I was saying is authoritarian. Because is, is this relevant to the actual conversation of point? It is actually. Because okay. um, oh, I'm like, word for it. <laughs> in, in this specific instance, right? Authoritarianism is, you know, that would be the extreme of it right but then the other side of that is to reduce the size of something to the point to where it can be really you actually can streamline the process and i feel like that that was the original intention with the constitution as ratified in september of 8, 1787 right and moving forward to say the 12th amendment right so ctv you actually support... no the, the 13th amendment actually it was really at the 14th where it kind of got to where now it's more control from the federal level than it being at the state level, right? Would you so support when, just out, out of curiosity? Like, I just want to I just want a clarifying question. Would you support like a Puerto Rican independence movement if they decided to leave the U.S.? And also, do you also I, support like I mean, um like abolishing the police and stuff like that? Right. So so when it comes to including others, other nations, other states, other territories, right? Basically, groups of people that are occupying a particular piece of land and they choose to be a part of this union right they're like because you could have a country in africa that goes hey we want to be a part of the united states how do we go about that process because that'd be really cool to do you know so like if you reduce the size of this federal government to where it has less power in things so that those powers would then rest with the nation that wants to join then the government doesn't have to work as hard in order to try and include people because they I mean, would be handling like you would those need kind to, of issues. It, it feels Wait, like in order to... Then what's America? Then what's the I American think we've run the gambit on Panama, and this has been really interesting and cool, but let's... Uh, you want to get really feisty and angry and talk about abortion now? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, think this is I mean, honestly, CTV, I'm fine with moving to the next point? topic because I'm ex extremely confused as to what anybody is talking about here anymore. Like, it feels like oh, we're just I, kind I, of like... I, like it feels like fantasy football with like... Like, what if America drafted Somalia? Wouldn't that be cool? Guitar. I, I, actually, I, I, guitar. I actually think that CTV, yeah. me and CTV had this conversation before, and like, this would spawn into other things. CTV, if you want to hit me up another time, I think this is actually a really interesting conversation. I agree with you guys, but uh, yeah, I do think we should probably accelerate the conversation to the next topic. I do want to mention real quick, uh, I'll get to you, Tiberius, just one second. I think Freems has to go. Freems, are you still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait, camera? I don't yeah, know what happened. This can, okay, cool, cool. Um, you yeah, have to yeah. leave? Yeah, I have okay. to work early tomorrow. Um, Fair enough. Thanks for having me on uh, twitch.tv slash streams. Usually, uh, I cover Appalachian politics from a leftist perspective. I host the Echo Chamber on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. with ICO Rules. It's a non-debate panel. Was coherent. Uh, leftist, I felt so that was like... If that's something you'd be interested in, come check it out. Um, Thanks for having me on wide. Uh, and, uh, no you always right. Peace out, Frames. Yeah. Good talk. Take care, Frames. Yeah. Yeah. Tiberius, were you, were you going to just basically ask me to move on to the next topic too? Or? No, actually, I, it was related to this because we were talking about the territories. And there's one big issue I have with the other territories that Puerto Rico doesn't fall into. And that is okay. that all the other ter territories have a very minimal population. And all the co complaints that we've had out of California about, hey, we have to give a representative seat to Idaho and a representative seat to Montana and Wyoming which I think is a legit conversation to have, is that that's going to be so much worse when it comes to having, if you will, Guam or the American Samoa or whoever else signed on because their populations are nothing compared to like Puerto uh, Rico. They would be the Poland smallest populated states by yes. a major factor. I think Wyoming is at 500,000. Guam's the next, and it's like at 170. And Very so, yeah, like, yeah. I, you know, definitely whether – this isn't really an argument on the right, but as far as the argument that on the left is that the left's usually upset that, you know, California doesn't get as many votes as its population would probably demand of it. And I largely agree with that. Uh, so do you actually want to make that worse by adding more territories? Mm. I don't think Puerto Rico is actually against the less favor. No, I think, I think the other ones are. I don't get it. <laughs> I actually think that's, that's a very legitimate question. Um, and Shay, I would, I would very much be interested in just kind of going around and hearing thoughts on that uh, real quick. If, if you guys are interested in talking about that, because uh, there is an interesting thing to, to talk about where, um, especially when it comes, comes to the electoral college, like how do we feel about the idea of giving specific sets 
of people in specific locations, special representation. Um, it seems to be the case that typically, uh, if I'm going to go down like the partisan train here, that the left is typically um, sort of against the idea of favoring certain special interest groups, uh, especially when it comes to the Tor College, um, in, uh, in favor of rather more direct uh, forms of democracy, like so say, for instance, like popular vote um, determining the general election. Um, would it be sort of a betrayal or a cognitive inconsistency or, or sort of like cognitive, an, an instance of cognitive dissonance uh, if we were to say, for instance, prioritize giving uh, statehood to Guam to the Northern Marian uh, Mariana Islands, giving them one House of Representatives member, two senators, um, but then also favor abolishing the Electoral College because it's like, you know, is it clear that we're really in favor of more direct forms of democracy if we're trying to give special privilege to these um, smaller territories? Yeah, I just want to know what you guys think about that. I think that's what Tiberius was trying to say. On a level, yeah, that's... it was a good point. I mean, that I think he said it very well. That's a perfectly good point. Like, I think... yeah, if they're so small, and but then we give them statehood representation. Like it's like okay, that's it, it's against uh, others like other arguments that people have made. Yeah. So yeah, it's I like mean, we're, it's like we're essentially giving some like very very mediocre, not mediocre, like very very moderately sized like city in a state like Montana representation. Basically, we're not even giving like a full state's worth of population uh, representation. We're giving like a, a a decently sized city in a state in any state that you can think of in the union basically the full representation of an actual state in, in most other, in most the other. The town I live in would be like as big as Guam is. Exactly. So yeah, could, I, real quick, I, I think this is interesting enough to talk about. Yeah, let's hear it like Polars, for instance. What are your thoughts yeah, on this? So, uh, I think what's would probably be like an interesting idea is if they were formed into like- Yeah, this is mostly brain soup. I hope you guys are still uh, having fun. I hope, I hope I haven't killed everyone's one interest one in my like, stream. We're gonna do more um, afterwards. But that has to go through both I just, uh, like, both territories. I'm having an all right time. Vote on it. But if that ends up being it's the just case, kind of a weird um, topic. You could probably have a, a lot of people are drunk and high on here. Uh, like the Pacific Islands are generally calling the matter or this something. Why I don't drink or smoke when I'm on stream. It's viable, right? That may help address this issue if we have to stay within the confines. Of yeah, the I'm sure it's going to be terrible. Ziggy, uh, but but we'll find out. That right, might be fun. Right? Like, this is a major issue that the Democratic Party has currently is with the Electoral College. Um, and this would seem like a really, to a certain extent, somewhat like to advocate for this would be somewhat um antithetical we're not always like, like that pink 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 sometimes we do good stuff so i think that'd be that'd be somewhat interesting is to combine them and then actually have what we consider like enough population for a stay you definitely could take guam and northern marianas because they're literally the same island chain that like yes, Saipan please and Tinian, do. So literally right up the coast or please do right leave. up the water um so you could pull that in but it's still all together like two hundred and thirty thousand people so you're still going to have a massive population disparity issue when it comes to that. Oh, well, I'm glad. Mistake. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's better than like, just doing one. LA that, that you, you, if anything, I would push for, although this would you, they'd have to vote for it, is uh, what we did with Macronesia, where we make it basically an American client state that they are their own independent country. They operate uh, autonomously uh, under well. their own rules, but we basically say, hey, we'll protect you. We'll we'll help you out if you really need it. That kind of thing. Of course, we have to own up to that, but. It, it's strategically very important, so I don't think we right. would renege on that one. Demon Mama, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the there seems to be something that uh, seems like an obvious flaw, which is that like, I mean, how fucked is our system that we can't have like actual proportional representation, and that we end up squabbling over land size and population size, and that there's a lot of people who don't have any say in their government. I feel like that's more of an indictment of the way that we've set things up that we should be aiming to get rid of um we should be aiming to get rid of the 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 Senate as we understand it now and the electoral college um in the name of working towards a much more uh representative system even if you don't believe in a de direct democracy and I don't believe in a in a 100% direct democracy myself um I do believe that there's some serious issues that Americans need to um come to terms with with regard to how much representation and power we actually have most americans have very little um and people who belong to territories of the united states have even less um i think that's a huge problem and um i don't know there i don't think that um i think there's something what? sort of wrong with uh the idea that we have to choose between uh that, that we have a system set up in such a way that we would have to choose between um like a, a fair electoral system versus 
fair representation don't you don't we think that the system should be designed to give representation to people so like why why is it so dangerous for us to bring a new to bring a territory into statehood um you know well pr frankly because we have a system that is already designed to um you know privilege certain places over others um, I think that's a big problem. I think we need to look into that. It's a huge discussion, like, as far as how we can go forward from that. But I do think that we need to seriously look into abolishing the Electoral College and restructuring the Senate um, pretty significantly. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have this problem. And it's only going to become worse as people, you know, as urbanization um, continues. So, Sako, I sense you're in agreement with that. Was that just kind of... Yeah, you know, absolutely. I'm totally fine with abolishing the electoral college or expanding upon two more until, boosts you know, until we get discord oh my like, god yeah, abolish the electoral college because right now there's uh, i don't i think if we were to like vote on should we abolish the electoral college it, we probably would win that sure brian uh yeah you've had your head up for a while what's up all right i'm gonna keep it a stack and a half with you guys as uh pretty much a lefty and a californian so as someone with the most vested interest in ab uh, abolishing the Electoral College, I actually think it's... I would abolish the Electoral College, but for none of the reasons that any of you guys are talking about. Because the only reason that lefties want this sort of, like, better representation thing is because they honestly believe that the majority of Americans are leftists, okay? And so this sort of idea of, like, um, no, not direct democracy, but, like, control by left-leaning people like oh if only we could get it's like a problem it's like a a hurdle that we have to jump to get left-leaning policies in places like this damn electoral college like giving a hundred right-leaning people in the country the ability to have like too much political control flip that around on its head like if i was a right-leaning person or if i was a the same person i am now in a country that was controlled by right-leaning people and they wanted to get rid of, rid of the electoral college like I'd be screaming about how I don't want fascism in the same way that all these right-leaning people are screaming about how they don't want socialism. So I, I would think abolish for... the electoral college, but not because like I want direct democracy or more people to just like uh, to to just have California and New York decide elections. I would abolish it because I don't think it does an effective job at what it's supposed to do. Where now instead of caring about the eight most populous states. We care about like eight states that uh, have weird electoral margins that are like swing states, right? I think a legitimate way to do this would be to cut up America in sort of like interest groups, far less than 50, uh, maybe like zones like South, North, East, West, something like that. Those are just random examples, I guess. But to make it so that like you as a political candidate, especially for president, have to speak to all of these groups in some way and mitigate your interests um, and align your interests with theirs in some way, not just go after Georgia, I guess, which is now a swing state, Iowa and all these, or in the abolished this electoral so college dumb. system way by just appealing to Californians and New Yorkers and all that shit. Okay. So question. like, wait, there's like so I, much that was wrong with that statement. Like, first of all, I don't think you've ever talked to a leftist if you think that like leftists believe that there's like a majority of leftists in this country. Secondly, you currently live in a country that's like swinging hard fash, like right now. So oh, uh, that is the dumbest shit I have ever. Really? You want to? You want to? You want to <laughs> debate me on that? Because I would love to have you on, and I will completely. No, just, I will you literally. Do, you do is talk politics on the fucking internet so you have no idea what fascism is or whether or not we're fascist wait a second. now wait wait hold on a second i'm sorry i'm sorry do you know anything about me no i, I don't know I, I i get the feeling that you only do anything like talking you know about politics on the internet um i don't know wait, much wait. about you but you should probably speak for yourself when i'm talking about a country swinging into fascism i mean that i've been this is what i cover this is what i do uh, for a living, I cover uh, actual uh, real politics. What's that? Sorry. Right. So you talk politics on the internet. Yeah. True. Wait. Wait. That's okay. like, I. I that's, don't see how he said anything wrong. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Exactly what we're doing right now. <laughs> wait, wait. That's that's literally what everyone is doing right now. But the idea, the fact, the, the fact of the matter was the the appending of the of the statement that oh, I don't know what fascism looks like, while you literally ignore actual fascism currently happening in this nation 
right now. And again, open, profession? open, wait a second, open invite to anybody. I know this isn't the like purview of this panel, but open invite to anyone on this panel. If you want to come on to my show afterwards, I will school you on this easily. No problem. I'm so confident. I would, I would love to have you on and show you how wrong you are and just how absolutely dumb you sound. Trying that to sounds play so great, but I feel like that if I okay, to not you, CTV, be because I know that you need to right? sleep off your wait, drinks. What? So I hear me? Wait, wait, wait I, so guys, hold, uh, guys and girls, hold that invite, uh, because I do want to again try to have some semblance of cordiality here as we shift over to the next topic. Uh, I think maybe we've exhausted everything that we can say about this particular issue without getting super. Heated. I have one question. Yeah, I will. I give. I will give you the closing thoughts. Please. Sure, and you know what? If uh, if there's a brief answer. Then I'd like to hear it. Uh, and otherwise, I'm fine with moving on. Um, you know, so each state has an electoral college, and the electoral college, I think, is based on the districts, correct? Districts so, and senators. Okay. So uh, why is it that, uh, like, whole states have to go? Why can't each district have, like, its represent, have, like, their vote represented? Why it's can't what Maine, it's what Maine and Nebraska do, does, and I'm actually more in favor of that. Just I don't doing see that. where that base is. That, that just sounds fine to me. Yeah, I mean, the reason yeah. why is because that's not what the Electoral College has been structured to do. So, yeah, I mean, if we want to reform, like radically reform the way the Electoral College works, um, sure, I bet we could make some serious uh, serious progress there. Right, so then what you're saying is, is that you're going to have to go into each one of those 50 Wait. states and tell them that they can't handle the Electoral College in their state, right? Because as far as the Constitution is concerned, all it where, is— Where did she say that? The, the representatives okay. and the senators added together, right? So that's what you'd have to do in order to radically change the electoral college is to go into each state and tell them how it was going to be run. Would you not? not the states can do this on themselves. In fact, yeah, if I remember right, saying. Colorado just passed it to do the same thing that Maine and Nebraska does. That's Doesn't exactly what I'm saying. That. When you say radically change, that means you're going to have to tell these states that they have to do it this way, no, right? That's not so what that's that means. Exactly that's that's what not I'm what saying. that means at all. Maine that's just all means, Maine radically changed the way that they engage with the electoral college. Maine functionally abolished what we understand as the electoral college by instituting a ranked choice vote system that leads to proportional representation. It's a totally different system. If they want to call it still participating in the electoral college, I mean, there's another thing that's going like this. The um, what's it called? Interstate the, compact. Yeah, interstate compact. The interstate national popular vote compact or whatever the fuck it's called that thing um that is also another one that would functionally sidestep the electoral college they'll say yeah we're using the electoral college but they're actually ignoring all of the basically all except for the technicalities of the of the electoral college so no i don't think you're on on a, like your base so you would have to go oh, into each and every state and tell okay. them how it was going to be set up hey, in order for it to be on. this. There's, thing. More, there's more straw on this panel than there is on my wait, farm. Wait, Let's go. Guys, we're we're gonna give we're gonna give Polars the response here, and then seriously, I do want to move on to the next topic because we're like 30 minutes over on this topic. So Polars, you get so, the response yeah, on this. Yeah, just to end this up, CTV, it doesn't. It's not just the fact that you're not going in and telling it. It actually seems like these initiatives are actually relatively popular. Yes, they right, are. With the the citizens hugely there. popular, um, especially uh, in places where they like, uh, especially in like smaller areas, and like a lot of cons like Republicans end up voting for this as well because they feel that they're misrepresented by the representation of the whole state. So that seems to be the most effective way of doing it. Um, a lot of times you just need the idea out I there, know, right? It's like so how many, stupid. How this many, is so like, incoherent. How many people really know about like the, the way that like these systems are set up where not only is it proportional and done by like uh, congressional district, but by ranked choice voting. So just information may be the only way to do it. You're not really telling them to, they're voting on it in and of itself. Yeah, but here's the here's the rub, right? Like you, when you use language <laughs> like ban the electoral college or get rid of it completely you're banning it you are banning it i said a ball you're getting rid of it right so you would have to go into the fundamental it's, it's parts of the constitution right and i'm pretty sure it's oh, article you know you know article four. Just, or, just or clear ctp this, this currently does exist in maine and nebraska it's it's not you're not completely like you know this this is something that has been implemented it's not, I'm, I'm not trying to argue or anything like that i'm just i just want it to be known that uh 
Uh, obviously, the state of Maine and Nebraska seem to have dealt with it pretty well. Yeah, I think um, so. Defense we're not like we got to be careful. Know, he's a, he's destroying an America by by CTV uh, more like these SCP. But I do agree with you that uh, precedent needs to be set before we make these reforms. If that is the point that you're trying to make, CTV, because you know this Apple isn't something that we should just like straight up oh God, implement so all around the country. Texas, sorry, we're breaking up all your districts. They're all voting separately. That's now. exactly um, what I'm saying. Like you can't just have the federal government go into the states because other states said oh. so and tell them how to take, change yeah. their shit. That's what I'm talking about. I take it back. Uh, After listening to CTV, I believe that we do need to go into all of these states and just forcibly change them to better systems because I don't know. And I I appreciate that you have, I appreciate Demon Mama, I appreciate that you have that thought, but you're going to have to do base CTV on that on your own stream because we're moving on. Thank God. Thank God. Let's get angry. I love all of you. I love all of you. But we're moving on. Okay, so protests in Poland, right? Completely changing gears, I realize. Uh, protests in Poland erupted October 22nd. That was, I think, uh, about a month ago at this point, due to an attempt to tighten what was already one of Europe's most abortion-restrictive months, countries. Protesters have accused Poland's governing party, the Law and Order Party, um, and there's some other name too. Uh, it's essentially the Law and Order Party, of, among other things, hijacking Poland's judiciary via stacking it with judges that are loyal to their party. Mm-hmm. Um, the, attempt to, uh, the attempt to ban abortion in the case of fetal abnormality, which was the situation um, in which 97% of abortion procedures uh, in 2019 were performed, uh, was, it, uh, was what ignited these protests. The question is, or the questions are, are these protests justified? Are there any similarities to these protests in the ones concerning BLM in the United States? Most Polish women seek out state services when they require an abortion anyways, uh, uh, again, out of state or out of country in this case. Uh, should that remain the status quo? Should it be the case that women just, if you want an abortion in Poland, you just got to go out of country for it? Um, or should we maybe see, or should the state of, I guess, Poland see about maybe listening to its citizens' demands, listening to protesters' demands, and uh, changing sort of their uh, uh, changing sort of their trajectory on this issue? I want to start this one off actually with Sako. So Sako, what are your thoughts on this issue? Oh, so this, like, just abortion in general is very, like, uh, a very uncomfortable topic uh, for me, especially. Uh, but I think it's one that's important to discuss. Um, and I want to, I want to uh, talk a little about. Uh, Here we go. Like, if you if you read me this headline but excluded the word Poland, you'd okay. Well, you would have probably have to specify that it was a country in Europe. I'd be like, oh, that was Poland. Uh, this is no surprise coming from that country. Uh, and by the way, the Law and Justice Party is um, Justice. That's the other name. It, it, it's it's a fancy way of saying like Poland's fascist party because the the Law and Order Party or excuse me, the Law and Justice Party is a right wing. Well, I don't guess they clarify it or like call like officially call themselves that, but they're a right wing populist group, which is another way of like another fancy way of saying fascist. So <laughs> there, wait, wait. let it be known. Do you think that's if nothing funny? else is true, they are, they are definitely theocratic. Let that be known. They are very, very devoutly Catholic. Let that be known. Um, so I appreciate your uh, opinions on this, Sako. I will now give it over to Brian. So, Brian, what's up? What do you think about this particular issue? Um, we're not in open discussion yet. So, yeah. I know. I know. I am noted an adult, leftist. Okay? God, yeah, he's a fascist. I, can, I right, did Brian's debate for four years in high school and four years in college. So, I know about the rules and shit. Okay. So, open discussion. Not now, later. Discussion. Okay. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm a lady? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I saw, just go on. What's up? What do you I, think about this? Issue? I've had two beers. Okay. So what do you think? I, <laughs> <laughs> Lightweight. Um, I think that, you know, like in terms, so I was a philosophy major. I kind of did a lot of ethics. The debate I did in college was ethics bowl. So we talked about things like abortion a lot. Um, not to talk about general abortion, but just to talk about Poland and government and how it impacts like social issues like this. I think if you're a moral realist, like if you really do think that there is a right or wrong answer on abortion and you live in a especially representative government, then you do kind of have to vote with the party that you believe has the correct stance on abortion, whether or not that's legalizing or banning abortion um unless they do so in such a like heinous way like i'm against abortion so i'm gonna murder all women you know that's obviously not something that's reasonable or acceptable but you know something like the united states um conservative party or i'm not an expert in polish politics but it seems like from what i've read about this 
they're still willing to allow abortions in the case of like um the mother's life being um in danger or ectopic pregnancies or things like that the only loophole that they closed was based on um i can't remember the word for it but basically like fetal abnormalities be they like mental or physical so without to get into my like personal feelings on abortion if this ruling party is legitimate and especially if this ruling party was put in democratically i think it's acceptable for them to make a decision like this and i would change my stance if they um, forced women to carry to term either rape babies ectopic pregnancies or um, pregnancies that threaten the life of the mother okay um yeah ctv i actually want to move it over to you what are your thoughts on this issue well specifically with regard to abortion i uh I don't know. I kind of think both both sides of the party position are, they are, are both kind of fucked. I'm sorry. Really, I am of the camp of no government involvement, uh, because frankly, most of the time when these we things are happening, it, CTV, it ultimately though. ends up coming down to a conversation between the doctor and the patient. A doctor has no to commit no harm, and he gets issued a medical license by the government, so they're already keeping tabs on kind of what kind of things he's doing anyway. Right, so why sure. does there need to be additional pieces of legislation that dictate that the doctor can only perform one inside of these these you know constraints that the government has? And then what if there's some crazy ass position that hadn't been considered by the government? So at that point, the doctor's ability to be able to help his patients could become restricted because it doesn't fall within these particular guidelines. And that's where I ran into this exact same problem, but in a much different way when it came to procedures that are written by the government that I had to perform when I was on board the submarine. Right. So Fair. that's where I get into the I really feel like that since the doctor's already issued a medical license. Right. He has to perform Always medicine and get submarine. checked on by his peers and by government entities. And if he's over there, you know, doing 600 percent more abortions than any other doctor in the region. Right. Well, maybe there's a reason for the government to go start saying, hey, dude, like what is going on around here? Perhaps you're actually committing more harm than you are good. Right. So the sure. system's already there to check it. It's just like passing even more shit only makes the government bigger, which I feel like that only ends up conflating language and confusing the shit okay. out of people and making it hard to really get anything I'm, done. I'm so. so then on the topic of specifically this issue, it sounds like you're in favor of or rather against the Law and Justice Party expanding their sort of uh, stranglehold on, um, Three, on, on abortion, which is to say, sea. you know, again, they're trying to make it more restrictive and you're maybe not. You're, maybe it could be said that you're in favor of the protesters ex ex exercising possible, their yeah, right to gosh. protest and against what the Law and Justice Party is doing? Or is that a fair statement to make? Sure. No, that was kind of a long way. Sure, we'll sure. go with that. Okay. Sweet. Demon Mama, what's up? What do you think about this particular issue? Law yeah. and Justice Party? Uh, yeah. yeah, Poland um, has been um, seized by a uh, solidly and obviously mask-off fascist movement. Um, that has instituted anti-LGBT zones. The leader of the current party uh, was recently went on record saying that he believes that gay ideology is an ideology worse than communism that will destroy their society. I mean, literally, just this is this is almost indistinguishable from Nazi <clears throat> Germany's rhetoric. Um, quite literally, um, he's just maybe perhaps missing a little bit of the JQ, but who knows? I'm sure he sprinkles that in from time to time. Um, yeah, I think their protests are completely legitimate. Um, it's, it's a, uh, in fact, I would go even further than this. I think that the protests, should they so decide to, um, overthrow the Polish government would be totally within their rights. Um, even if, even if that party, um, had been democratically elected, um, keep in mind that, um, repressing the rights of women, repressing the rights of lgbt individuals is not a democratic system i wouldn't have called our system under slavery a democratic system um because even if you vote for for you can't vote away the rights of someone else who deserves them in my opinion so yeah i would be on the side of the protesters um and those resisting these changes 100 percent 
Um, we already know that um, abortion bans don't actually do much to reduce abortions. They just make them go underground and become more dangerous. Um, they also make them functionally impossible for poor people um, because poor people can't travel out of the country. Um, and therefore, uh, it makes poverty worse. Um, actually, it's interesting. This sort of uh, policy making makes everything worse for everyone except for a very small minority of people at the top who can afford the luxury of going anywhere. It almost seems like they're slowly trying to turn back the clock into some sort of like pseudo monarchist, pseudo feudal state where women won't have rights and LGBT people can be killed whenever you want. And uh, to be completely honest, I, uh, I hope that the protesters continue. And in fact, I hope they succeed. I hope they are able to eradicate the uh, right wing presence in their country. And I wish that for most of the world too. it'd be fantastic if we were able to drive out these uh, dinosaurs who have no idea of, of what of the future of humanity would look like besides, Oh, we should go back to monkey. So except there's I mean, first of all, been a direct correlation made to you know, mankind and monkeys, but you know, well, yeah. we're not. Oh, okay. That's a hugely not different open, discussion. We're definitely not an open discussion yet. So Tiberius, uh, give me some pushback if you can, if you can't, I understand, you know, obviously tell me what's on your heart firstly, but what do you think about these protests in Poland? What's up? Well, all right, so bias first, while I am seen as a more right-wing conservative member of this panel, is that I'm actually pro-choice. I'm extensively pro-choice. I'm for, yeah. uh, I, I don't know if abortion on a man's the word CTV for it, but just stumbled even, and lobbed. you know, going that far. So at least you, there's my standing. I support the protesters on that particular level, is that uh, I, I think they need their self-determination to make the decisions that they need to in their lives, that it best re represents what they think they need. Um, going into what we're seeing with Poland, uh, Poland is basically kind of the hot zone for what we're seeing with a lot of EU politics, though we're seeing this in Hungary. We're seeing just politics getting very violent, They're not violent, but we're also getting vitriolic. We're seeing coalitions get all over the damn place, and it's it's a show, but it's a scary show. Um, long story short, at least from what I'm seeing, is that uh, the, the right in Poland is far more cohesive than the left is is that the left actually had more voters but they weren't coalitioned under the civic coalition you had the left you had the Poland coalition you had all these people that split mm -hmm. apart and it was enough to actually let the the, the uh, united right coalition led by the uh, law and justice party to to take the throne and um unfortunately we're seeing the same thing that we're seeing like largely in hungary is that they're totally just walking yes. back a lot of totally social liberties that. it's I hate to throw the word fascist around because it's thrown all the way too much, but it's definitely one of the leading outliers here in what we're seeing in Europe. And unfortunately, the thing that I'm scared of is that we're probably going to see even more of this throughout the entire Eurozone as things go on and things get worse. We're seeing it here. Nice. Um, Polars, I want to jump it over to you. What's up? How do you feel about this issue? Do you have any conflicting opinions or are you just um, kind of in the same boat? I'm kind of in the same boat. I think the Law and Justice Party is utterly disgusting. Okay, um, they're heavily driven by theocracy, um, to a certain extent, uh, by their like the what is it, the Catholic Church there? Um, even though the Catholic yep. Church there has done some really fucked up shit, um, and they've been accused of multiple, multiple, multiple counts of sexual assault. I think this abortion ban is not effective, I think it's repulsive. <laughs> it's just literally, as Tiberius mentioned, a rolling back of the clock on a lot of social liberties. Mm -hmm. Now, a better yourself. question, uh, a better question may be to ask, you know, why. Right. Like, why is this happening? And I think that's actually uh, a more interesting one. Right. Uh, my understanding is before they had a workers party and that didn't end up going as effective as they wanted. Um, and now we're here. So I, I don't know about the case in Hungary, but I think Tiberius mentioned that's also what's happening there. It's also what's happening here. Um, in the that, US. That's kind of my opinion on it. I wonder if anyone is going to come out here and be like, oh, we love the law and justice party. Let's go. Uh, I, I'd hope not. Right. I, I'd really hope not. <laughs> I did not pick this topic. Let it be known. I did not pick this Brian's topic. Brian's getting ready. Anybody would defend the law. Yeah, it's all right. But don't worry. I don't need the credit. We still need to hear from Brento from you because uh, we, we can't go into open discussion without hearing from Brento. So what's up, Brento? Um, are you going to give us the only conflicting opinion? I thought I had at least one pro-lifer on this uh, panel. I guess I was wrong. Oh, we haven't gotten to open discussion, buddy. Yeah. That's fair. But uh, the one conflicting opinion. Um, no, know. I don't really have a conflicting opinion on this. Um <laughs> I Fair think uh, I think there's like, you know, there's obviously a fear of rolling back uh, abortion rights. Um, I do not go so far as to say, like, I'm a man. I can't speak on abortion. I think that's actually, like, intellectually bankrupt. I think it's so stupid. I think it's like somebody's just 
pretty much just citing like I would like to give a a little like get out of you know get out Nobody of this said that. free He's pass and then they can just pretend they don't care or something. I don't think that's true. I don't think that makes any sense. Nobody um, said that. This is a panel but, of mostly men. Uh, I do recognize that um, abortion is is like a uniquely uh, a a uniquely like female issue and um so it's something that i don't uh speak on too much i guess uh or try and like claim authority on uh uh so no i think um i understand what they're saying they're saying it's a form of eugenics or something um you know that the, their argument was that it's a form of eugenics to uh abort a, a fetus or a child in the womb based on a defect so that's how they're seeing it and they're they're actually saying there's it's no anti-fascist there's because a that's whole the lot of bussy did. that's their that's their justification for it um generally i don't think that it, that is uh correct um i think that it should i think they should essentially probably stay out of it uh and they shouldn't have changed the law i would say they shouldn't have changed the law Sure. And uh, just let it be known, I don't think the law has been changed yet. I think they did halt that as a, I I think a result it. of the protests. Um, but I'm not trying to correct you or anything like that. I just, um, no, fine. I do not. I'm wrong. I, tell me. I, I do not. Oh, okay. You weren't necessarily wrong, though. I, again, they were, they were attempting to change the law. Now, I do want to open it up to uh, open discussion. I do, I guess, uh, I, I realize that none of us are necessarily going to disagree Watch on us. the sort of moral philosophy of like uh, maybe when a life begins. I know, Brian, you're Brian looks it. like he's about ready to drop a fucking, a fucking like a slur here. He's like, whoo, yeah. whoo. I'm definitely ready for the A-bomb Brian's about to drop, but I do just want to be abundantly clear here that there can be two separate discussions that we can have at the same time, right? One of them is like, where does conception begin? Where does life begin? Moral uh, philosophy, normative ethics, et cetera. And and then the other is the sort of very unique situation going on in Poland I don't care. concerning the currently gov governing party, um, the very, we'll say, yeah, his head, uh, he's, he's covert going five methods head. that they've used to usurp power um, and consolidate it into their own uh, political party. Uh, whether or not that's right, et cetera. Again, I didn't expect anybody to come out and defend the law and justice party. But um, what exactly should be done about that situ uh, situation can be co a conversation that's had separate to the specific issue of abortion. So open discussion, Brian. By okay. all means, give me that. I'm going to give two sentences on things that I think are not that relevant, but that kind of pissed me off about the way that people are talking about things. This like openly fascist, oh my God, they took control in ir like irreverent, terrible ways, whatever. Um, you know, you can just Google democracy indexes, okay? Poland ranks 57th. Now they are down by three places, okay? That puts them as a flawed democracy, Watch but this. solidly in the top 25% of um the 167 countries that they ranked and listed and in terms of like other countries in the european area they're ahead of croatia they're ahead of romania they're ahead of well now we're getting into some terrible ones like serbia but my point being it is a <laughs> stupid idea <laughs> well there's some good ones down there too but you know whatever the point being their civil liberties get a 7 out of 10, and their electoral system gets a 9 out of 10. So, like, this idea that when there's that some study? fascist government that, like, took over in terrible ways is fucking public? stupid, okay? You're wrong. Number two, the, the issue about, like, the morality of uh, abortion is inherently relevant to whether or not any governing body is justified or unjustified in legalizing or criminalizing abortion so like i i feel like that's something that we absolutely can't get past now this is where we really get into the meat and potatoes of it okay most people want to quibble over where life begins and blah 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 that has absolutely nothing to do with the moral um right or wrongness permissibility or impermissibility of abortion okay the question is whether or not what we're doing in the act of abortion is analogous or exactly the same as what we're doing when we take any other life. Now, uh, there's a philosopher, he's from Kansas, and I can't remember his name right now, but the argument that he lays out is called The Future Like Ours, okay? It is the most famous article in terms of, like, um, being in the pro-life category, okay? And the argument basically goes like this. The thing that's wrong with me killing Wired or with Wired killing me or with any individual killing other, any other individual is that we deprive them of a future like ours, of a future with the goods of consciousness, of 
perhaps friendship or happiness, the bad things too, okay, that we take that away from them, okay? So that's the wrongness. Not that we like took them from their family, whatever. Like what did we do wrong to them? We deprived them of a future like ours. Now the question is whether or not when we perform an abortion, the same thing is true, okay? So, but for our intervention, if we were not to take any action, it is likely that at least one of those uh, aborted fetuses would realize a future like ours. So the fact that we can't know whether or not that individual fetus would indeed enjoy a future like ours means that we should not be performing uh, uh, abortions because we are potentially depriving people of a future like ours. In the same way that at any moment in time, someone could drop dead of an aneurysm, even the same moment of time as a bullet that I shoot into their head could kill them, that doesn't mean that I am morally justified in shooting that person just because their future like ours happened to, without any knowledge of mine, uh, end at that moment. Hmm. So, okay. watch this. That, um, yeah. Can I ask you, Brian, do you partake in onanism? In onanism? Yeah. You Masturbation. Term? Masturbation. Yeah, yeah, it's the biblical term for masturbation. It comes from a man named Onan. Um, who yeah, was, so... Yeah, um, was, well, hold on, let me actually, finish. I want to give you the context. Because he was struck, you don't have to explain that. He was Come struck on, down by God because yeah, yeah, he spilled yeah, yeah, his yeah, seed yeah. on the ground. Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, this is one of the things that, like, every fucking first-year philosophy major asks of this article. And as you might imagine, the article addresses that. So, the article's thing is that for someone to lose a future like ours... They must be an individual whom that future can be attached to, okay? Which is why it begins at conception, because preconception, there are two things which do not gain a future like ours. Well, there's a problem Sperm there, and too. Eggs. Sperm and eggs don't have a future like ours. They're not an individual. They require, uh, you know, coming together oh, to become an but, individual. But, I mean, humans a... require the coming together of billions of cells, so wouldn't that apply in the exact same way? I, I feel like this is a flaw. To, like, it death. seems like your it seems like your um your argument like sort of assumes that like well you know sperm and egg they come together that's two becoming one but in reality they become a, a cluster of cells that all need each other to survive all humans are a cluster of cells that need one another to survive where do you draw the line mm -hmm. at individual uh, at the individual what do you mean at yeah, the individual this, that's okay. this is like this is like uh like why someone would you just arguing like wait hold on CTV this is just like someone being like you're just a, a big cluster of atoms everything is so therefore nothing is anything well, but like, I mean that's what you're, you're, what I'm, atomizing, you're atomizing the discussion to a point where you're trying to negate the meaning of the, of you're, the you're saying topic. that an independent that that an individual becomes an individual from the moment that the sperm enters the egg and that somehow is supposed to be a compelling argument to me well, that's that no more compelling than me that. arguing that no person is an individual right <laughs> like isn't this the whole <laughs> ship of Theseus problem this is literally the ship of, C of Theseus oh my problem. god I'm just like a fucking first year film major holy shit nice is that all you well, got I, is that all you got for me maybe you shouldn't present me say, like, first like... All, yeah first of all Brian not a point at response that I would expect from somebody such as yourself Mr. Philosophy Major well, but I don't more important... <laughs> Wait, wait, I actually have a question for Brian, though. Like, Brian, question. We, talked, we talked about the conception of life, and that will occupy the, like, the vacuity of that conversation will now completely and totally absorb any thoughtful uh, conversation concerning the specific politics of Poland's governing party, which uh, I actually disagree with you in your initial statement. I do think we can have a separate conversation, one in which we talk about, say, for instance, you know, the life begins a conception or does it? Um, and then the other is, like, how do we feel about the consolidation of power that the uh, governing party in Poland has been uh, doing, yeah, especially so. in the last four years, and how that pertains to restricting women's rights Thank you. Uh, to access abortion services. Even if you disagree with, say, for instance, uh, the governing party's, no, so. uh, or sorry, with with a woman's right to something? choose what to do with like her body. A, can we all, like, I shouldn't say can we all recognize, because it is the debate topic. Do we think that the Law and Justice Party is going too far in restricting a woman's rights to abortion? Absolutely. For instance, and again, I'm not the one to 
Yeah, I'm not the one that's supposed to be making this argument. I'm trying to moderate the debate. But sure. I mean, can we, but Brian, you actually were the one that pointed, pointed this out very intelligently earlier, I thought, which is that you can say, for instance, have a moral stance against abortion, but still not think to yourself, huh, I'm against abortion. So I should just smash every woman's head in to make sure they can't get an abortion. It's like, uh, you know, to what extent is the governing party in Poland going too far or are they going too far? Because again, that's part of the debate um, in restricting a woman's right to access abortion even if you fundamentally disagree with women having that right to begin with. Uh, oh, yeah. Can I ask – yeah, can I actually go on? So I think – so I actually – this is actually an interesting conversation from Brian, but in order for it to be like a strictly like ethical like or like moral conversation about this, we want to have to assume that this law actually has a strong effect on actual abortion usage, right? So if the case is that abortions are still going on illegally, it doesn't really matter, right? If, you're, if your whole issue is with – um. If the actual law and then actually having massive penalties for it, that's a different situation. That's probably why this conversation can be separated from the morality of it, um, because it doesn't seem like implementing this law, at, at least in the U.S., it didn't seem like implementing laws like this actually had a actual effect on like abortion, um, like abortion, th the rate of abortions actually happening. Yep. Uh, like, that, likewise, like, I it's think not that... even a two percent decrease in abortions, like for somebody that believes that it's actually murder. Um, for an abortion to occur or that it's like identical to what murder is for an abortion to occur i think a two percent reduction in abortions would be seen as like a resounding success and that they would say to you the same thing about like you can yeah, make and murder at what cost at what cost though i mean that's the always other question you could say a two percent again uh wired guitar brought up the fact that hey if you just clubbed all women um, then you wouldn't have any abortions. That would be Are you uh, think saying that yeah. women can't get abortions in the case of like fetal miss. I mean, that's literally what they're trying to do. That's literally so what you're we're talking about. That's like some sort of moral equivalency. No, to what like... I'm trying to say is that it, it, we don't need to have a, 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 frankly, in my opinion, ridiculous and, uh, and, and difficult conversation about personhood and conception and, onanism and whatever we can actually just talk about policy and what actually has good outcomes what we know is that when you ban good outcomes, yeah, good outcomes. Good outcomes, good outcomes yes outcomes when you ban it when you ban problem. abortions you force people under the table they're more likely to have not only the children die but also the mother die from complications you're likely to have a black market of 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 medical um of medical professionals show up you're likely to see increased rates of of poverty as poor people can't have abortions um and especially in a country where um is swinging right and doesn't seem to have the best like sex education we have this problem here in the united states uh people have children younger than they intend to um and it just complicates Whoa, itself leading on. to more death leading to more death over time how are you gonna say that there's no sex education when clearly they're doing it good enough to where like it creates an abortion thing like clearly they know what they're doing. Oh, CTV, that's how she means. Oh, yeah, oh, children, literally, CTV. I'm sorry. Look, with all due respect, you're too stupid and drunk in order to actually engage with in good faith. Okay. Also, wait, hold on. There was another thing I wanted to address on that was wait, hold on. Let me let me finish. It's like you got to do like six monologues that were huge. Um, the, the fact of the matter is like, like, I, I think that, that, uh, the topic, uh, of, um, like whether abortions are bad or whatever is like, is kind of irrelevant to what we're talking about here. It's not that big of a deal. Um, because you suppose that they're good. No, it's because it doesn't matter what, what framework besides, um, besides the, the like idiotic American right wing per framework of, oh yeah, don't kill any babies because God told me not to, but then it's okay for us to cut in the middle of a pandemic Medicaid or all these other, literally just not giving a shit about the children once they're born. That's like such a dumb shit position. And it's really funny that you bandy about like calling people idiots and having dumb fuck takes when you lay out like this big fucking steel shit of a take on this panel when it's just like oh god told us the you know, abortions are bad two percent yeah, reduction was, even if it even if it literally does notify n notable harm to more people than the two percent that you would have saved it's ridiculous and second of all i i well, it's, 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 it, excuse me i'm not done C ctv i know i know hold on take a break take a break ctv i'm not done take a break um, like a whole thing there right so it's like you're already hypocritical from joe street which your with your theology 
right? So how is it that you're going to even convince me that you're remaining philosophically consistent across a broad range of spectrums whenever I can just look at the things that you've said, right? And they're just not lining up. So it's CTV, like- CTV, you're literally up. just a yeah, weird like like, guy pissing in the moment. corner of a bar. Like, it's like, please. Wait, can I ask you a question though? Wait, yeah, I, yeah, I, I wanted to have my chance to finish. The whole point was, look, let, listen, the idea that, like, the, the justice and order, law and justice party that's that's literally putting up LGBT free zones in is not an openly and obviously fascist party is just hilarious. Brian, if you want to admit that you're, like, have fascist sympathies or whatever, you should just do that. It feels good to have a spine. And I would recommend you to do that. Otherwise, you should really acknowledge the fact that this is clearly an incredibly far-right party with fascist ideology and and fascist outcomes and you should just own up to that fact whether you agree with them or not you shouldn't pretend otherwise all right doesn't mean that will give you a chance. wait brian i will give you a chance to respond i promise brian i'm going to give you a chance to respond i just want to real quick because polish also wants to ask you a question so he wants to we, we want to gish gallop the fuck out of you basically brian you can you know get fucked if you could think about that question while i just say this sure. um and try to make it somewhat concise no i'm not i, I just don't want to gish yeah. brian too hard uh, after Brian gets the chance to respond, I need to incorporate Tiberius and uh, Sako in this conversation. Brento, you're getting fucked, basically, uh, because I'm I just haven't heard from the. Yeah, no, I'm just fucking around. Brento, you will get a chance to talk, but I, I do okay. eventually want to hear Tiberius and Sako and on, on this, and of course Brento as well. I was just kidding, by the way, Brento. Of course, I get you. I get you. Okay, so yeah, Polish, what's your We're question? Having fun. We're having yeah, fun. Uh, so... Oh, am I muted? Oh no, I'm good. Yeah, good. yeah so you're, you're good. You're good. I was just gonna ask, um, what's your ethical framework uh, in order to get some more context for this? Oh, See, no. the funny thing about that, and I'll be super brief about that, okay? The funny yeah. thing about that is I'm actually a moral anti-realist. The okay. thing is, I'm okay. just, ta I'm, what I'm trying to say is, um, when we talk about governments, they hey, make thank you so much for the one. Okay? Like, the world should be this way instead of this way. And so what I'm trying to do is engage in a discussion um, within so a moral much, Sam, realist framework, because that's what a governing body puts us in. Right. So, and so I think yeah. the best argument within that whole thing is for abortion being the same uh, moral thing as killing a person. Okay, I so, want to move the conversation real quick. Pullers, do you agree with that initial uh, initial supposition? Do you think that govern governments, uh, in the way in which they enact law, especially like normative law, like our citizens should should do this, and if they don't, they will get fined? Do you agree that governments do act in a very normative, prescriptive sense? Uh, yeah, that the, the kind of be the basic of ethics, right? Like, um, yeah. like, yeah, so like, I'd agree with that aspect. I don't know if I would agree with everything else that they said, but sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, what was, do you have a question beyond that? Was that? Um, yeah. I was, no, I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you that in order to get more context and then address what you were talking about, like earlier, like whether we should actually engage in policy that way, because depending on your framework, you probably already, this is a philosophy major, you could look at abortion in completely different ways. What I'm looking at abortion in is sort of like in a meta ethical way and not in like a um, normative ethical way. And so what I was trying to argue with from a like meta ethical standpoint is just like what type of thing is an abortion. And I think it's pretty clear whatever dumb shit gish galloping stuff demon mama wants to go on. What you do when you have an abortion is you get rid of an individual's future like ours. Because if you didn't think that that individual was going to have a future like ours, you wouldn't get an abortion. Because the day that it pops out, it just it's not a thing. It's just a dead, non-living whatever. So, like, these abortions, all the ones that we're talking about, they're not for ectopic pregnancies, which are the fetus is already dead. They're not for, like, rape cases, which is a totally separate normative question that I could answer. They're for women who have something that is going to be a being with a future like ours, who do not want a connection with that being, whether or not that's right or wrong. Um, that's what I I'm have, trying to say. It just sounds I like you it, are just saying I would agree words to try and dig your way out. Like, I don't understand what you're I, actually trying to add. I, I get his position. Ask yeah. me, so, like, let him fucking respond. So, sure. Um, I think I actually agree with, like, so even even if I necessarily agree with, like, the the, the future, like, ours initial part, you mentioned afterwards, you said that, like, if 
people understood it that way, they still wouldn't engage in abortions. I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that, right? Um, depending on your views of like egoism, for example, if you're a psych egoist, for example, or if you that that's where probably would. Yeah, I agree right. with that. Some people would yeah. want to get abortions even if they thought it was murder. Like I, I think that's totally so, true. So, sure. So you're just trying to make the argument, like, what is it? Right. Um, I don't know. Like you're making more of a descriptive claim in that sense. Like, what is it? Right. Yeah. What and the reason I'm trying to do that is because I think that question is essential to whether or not like a government is justified in banning abortions, because if if abortion isn't killing a person, then who gives a fuck about this? Nobody. OK, um, like the hard part is you're you're taking away a being's future like ours or you're forcing women to carry pregnancies that they don't want, which I think is fucking terrible too, by the way, like from a moral realist standpoint, it's a, it's a dilemma, which is two bad options. I mean, or I'm you're forcing is, women like, who believe differently than uh... you, because I like, here's the, here's, here's the weird thing. Like, it, it sounds like there's quite a complicated and difficult philosophical argument to be had over whether life or personhood begins here and there. And I have my own opinions and you have yours. But, but the about, world that they're advocating for, the world that they're advocating for, precludes allowing people to even have their own moral conclusion about it. It precludes the freedom of women to make that decision. And it forces them, and it forces them instead, as we know, factually, on, an, on a literal basis of consequences, it forces women to go into much more dangerous situations where the ba where the baby person or not will be killed and there's a higher risk to that person there is no benefit to even the pro-life people to banning abortion no benefit whatsoever it doesn't work i don't think i don't think there's such a thing as a higher risk situation for a baby than being aborted right what could be wait, higher wait, risk hold on, baby um, than hold on. did you listen to That's anything true, i said Do, are you aware oh, wait, wait wait hold on, hold on. wait wait wait, wait. hold on this is really important did you know that babies come from mothers did you know that babies are inside of people so now and you're just in that sentence, wait, right? You know, you know, have wait I literally so just said this, and someone go. Okay, okay. 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 Just, hey guys, I appreciate, hey, I got I appreciate you being here. Definitely don't want to mute. Definitely don't want to mute. But we got a little crazy there for a second. Uh, sure, I do right. want to draw the conversation back to uh, the 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 interlocutors that we're arguing, but I at the same time feel like just so bad. Tiberius, do you have anything to say about this? And then we'll jump over to Sako. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm largely not nearly equipped to have the the philosophical conversation. Like I had like two philosophy classes back in college. Uh, my, sure. my I'm 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 a me uh, economics poli I'm the lefty. poli sci guy. So the, most me. of this conversation has been over me. I understand like pieces of my moral framework and like why they line up, but uh, I I don't feel like I can really add to this yeah, in a way okay. that don't worry. At They're least fucking coward level, losers. These guys were talking, so pass. Well, okay, and again, I want to say this one more time, not mm -hmm. necessarily point Joe, to you, uh, Tiberius, but I want to make sure that everybody on the panel knows we can have this conversation about normative ethics, whether or not Joe's governments not could here. be allowed to you restrict might be abortion rights, world. whether or not a child's life begins at conception. And we can, you know, we can have that conversation, it can be very interesting, but that's not why, I mean, I'm not saying it's off, off limits, but I'm saying that's not necessarily why I put this topic on. Um, mm -hmm. I do think yeah, there's true, an interesting level, conversation to be had there, but I also think that sp specifically pertaining to this case in Poland, um, there is a very interesting, I don't even want to say side conversation, another conversation to be had about how, well, you know, even if I say, for instance, was somebody who's super pro-life, doesn't want abortions to take place whatsoever, I can still recognize if I were that person, um, the, like, thank you, Billy. I'll just say gross overreach from the state in this instance, in terms no, of how they basically deliberately stacked the courts, um, their, uh, their federal judiciary to, uh, align with their certain values and all of the different things that they've done over the course of the last four, even 10 years, really to essentially just make like abortion incredibly difficult. Um, yeah. And I think that can be an interesting conversation that we have as well. But again, if you don't I mean, have anything I can to add, comment on that to a certain degree, I mean, again, I feel like this sure. whole, like, um, si like sort of like sidestep into like the philosophy of, of abortion is more or less a way of side of Brian sidestepping the fact that he probably agrees with the fascist party of Poland, but whatever. The fact of the matter, in my opinion, is that, um, uh, you know, first of all, we, 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 we have, okay. Uh, so we have a party that's in incredibly far right that is using whatever tools that are at its disposal to ultimately restrict the rights of a lot of people. And we're not just talking about women here, but we are talking about women in a lot of ways since the focus is on abortion. But we know in the context, you know, 
understanding a little bit about Poland's politics, it's much, it goes much beyond women. This is a party that's very okay with restricting people's rights as long as they believe they have a moral or <clears throat> holy uh, or whatever right to do so. And I think that's a problem. What do you think a because, right is? Um, excuse me? What do you think a right is? I mean, there's a lot of potential definitions. It depends on what you're actually talking. It depends he on like you what, what you thought a right was. Wait, wait, there's multiple definitions. In general, yeah, but he's I'm using this in a view. So, I mean, okay, in definition. This, yeah, in this in context, this context, oh, I mean, literally. I mean, I think that if we're to, if the way that I'm using it right now, I mean, they think that they have the uh, moral justification to go forward with this sort of thing. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about what you think. Like Poland's government's rights are like. You're saying Poland is restricting its people's rights. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are the right? What's the definition of rights for the people that you're using? Oh, I mean, by I mean, that's a kind of a complicated question. But by and large, I tend to believe in um, that that we should focus on personal liberty. That people should be allowed to um, live their lives as uh, as they see fit, so long as they're not harming other people. Um, this is how I sort of. This is the sort of libertarian. Oh, so focus. harming other people, maybe like stealing someone's future, like ours, huh? Mm. That'd be. That'd be mm. pretty horrible to another person. Mm. Hmm. I, I mean, he was gonna do that. Maybe, but uh, I, I, I know that you maybe, want to. Maybe, 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 maybe. 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 I mean, yeah, uh, like, I don't know, like, this seems like, you, again, just a sidestep back to some sort of philosophical... No, that's you pussyfooting and not wanting to own your position. That's what, what that is. What are you is. talking about? Like, I mean, wait a second. Like, I just want to point out that I've literally not been able to finish a, a single sentence this entire fucking panel, and it's actually no, frustrating. That's entirely not true. Oh, Sorry. it is actually no, entirely true. true. Watch the motherfucking VOD. It's hilarious. Uh, guys, I'm more than willing to watch the VOD, and I guarantee you critically, this. Like, critically thinking, oh, veteran, you're wait, not I'm even not present here. I don't even know if you'll know how to find the VOD in the future. Let's be honest. Yeah. Let's make, let's make, we should make one thing abundantly clear. The energy of the room has been pretty actively, at least in over the last five minutes, like sort of Brian NCTV versus Demon Mama. So again, and I, I want to recognize that and also give Demon Mama a chance to respond to both. So when Demon Mama's talking, I'm not saying like give all the floor to her, but recognize that if you're holding a position that is simultaneously held by somebody else on the panel and only one person is on the opposition, um, in this case, even if it is somebody who you disagree with who's been maybe uh, belligerent to you, uh, try to show them the at, le at least the respect to respond to both of you guys at once rather than you dogpiling her. Um, it just seems really unfair. Um, yeah, so I'm not even like, trying to show favoritism or anything. No, I, I'm with you, but I'll, I said at the start, I'm for no government involvement, right? So like the fact that I'm even saying anything that is agreeing with what Brian is saying is because he's pointing out logical fallacies in the person that he's having his that's primary not, debate with. That's not what's happened at all. Like, That's... literally, I attempted to say something, and then two people butted in to try and be like, ooh, 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 look, I got you, I got you, but that didn't what actually happen. The game is loaded with a ton of implications. Wait, okay, so can you actually so, can you actually name your yeah, question so I can try to yes. answer it? I mean, you, I'll so, point out you just interrupted me again when I still so haven't even my, finished my original my point about it. Sure. Here's my point about it, okay? Yeah, go You for were it. going on this long, enigmatic rant about I didn't even start! What are you talking about? so bad that Poland is taking away yeah. the rights of its citizens. Yeah, I and do believe so that. My questions to you were about the implications behind what you're saying, the underlying assumptions. Yeah, yeah. What are my those belief rights? is that... Where do those rights come from? And when you answered, when you said... I think people should live their lives in a way that is free unless they are harming another individual. What I'm trying to point out to you is I made an argument about how abortion is harm to an individual. Yeah, and, and I don't you just care about your stupid argument. argument. I don't now, care about the dumb fuck that doesn't actually know anything nice. about Whoa. Whoa. Nice and meme. And Literally and too stupid. Wait, listen, listen. Hold on a second. It's my turn now. It's actually my turn. Listen, this is this is my turn now. I think I'm sorry. With all due respect, I literally haven't been able to finish a single sentence, and this guy is so triggered by the fact that a woman has thoughts that he's blown up like six times. Oh, on I'm it. triggered that a dumbass has thoughts. Oh, <laughs> cry a little harder, baby. Listen, I know you're mad that I called your little Nazi party the Nazi party. You don't like being called that. You don't like being associated with fucking Nazis because you really do sound a bit Nazi. -ish. No, it's just but it's like right. when we listen, listen to you, you're so disingenuous. Uh, hey, there we go effect. again. Boom. Like, I'm so tired of hearing all this condescending I, talk come from you. Still haven't like finished the reaction. first sentence I tried to start. Reality, not even one. Like you're a dumbass. 
you realize you realize that if you don't ever let her talk and she never gets to finish a point and she's pointing out that she never gets to finish a point and you're still not letting her talk that that just like is the ultimate duck on you guys regardless of how adamantly opposed to her opinions you are it's not right? even and again, about that it's about when the ad hominem and then like <laughs> nobody in here is flying a swastika so why is that the primary no. language of this person again, again, it's right, even if you it's all bullshit, post, right so I know, I know. again and even if you adamantly post everything she's saying at least let her fully say the thought like complete the thought even if it seems like it's about like just take notes on what she's saying oh she just called us nazis okay check i'll address that when she gets done speaking oh and she just called us fascists i'll you know i'll address that and and then and then that way yeah but guitar do you not understand that by her mentioning every single one of these things along the way it's her attempt to control the conversation to where now people are arguing back against nazism and all these evil manipulative puppeteer woman using her feminine vials it creates that dynamic and that's what i'm trying to explain here you know what i mean you people are pathetic there's some there's she, there is some sensationalism in the way that she speaks. I recognize that as well. But that you, you can write that down and then just it's it's an ultimate dunk for you if you just let her complete her thought and say, hey, you called us a Nazi. That's just patently false. And then you move on to the next point. As opposed to just like the second she calls you guys a Nazi, uh, or the second she says like, you know, Brian showing sympathies for the Law and Order Party or the Law and Justice Party, which is clearly neo-fascist. The second you guys interrupt her, it's just like, it, it just, it, it, it's really bad. Like from a, from a, from a deba debate perspective, when two people jump down her throat, even if you vehemently disagree with what she says again she's not saying it in sort of a la la you guys are all nazis sort of way she's saying hey you guys are nazis and again i disagree with that i know brian on first level i don't think brian's a nazi but when it's you know when somebody calls him a nazi um even if that is something that you think like man he she just definitely shouldn't be calling me that it's like at least let her complete the thought because it just looks bad when every single time she speaks she's constantly getting in it it just doesn't make any sense you to know if she would if she would focus on the points instead of trying to create I love being talked about in a third party her. while i still it's haven't been simple. able to allow my point yeah. i will extend the all branch here so demon mama if the next time you criticize their positions could we just leave out the nazi you know, sure uh, like, i would like to make let's a say similar... brian you know go ahead sorry uh, I was just going to say, even if, like, let's say right next to Brian's guitar, there's, like, actually just a swastika behind the case. Like, <laughs> let's just imagine that doesn't exist for the sake of the conversation, because, like, if we keep focusing on that, it's just never going to be productive. So, again, I I'm I I'm going to serve me with the next person that interrupts her. Dima Mama, please take the floor, but try to not incorporate, like, super hardcore ad homs, because it just does not make the difference. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I was the one who engaged in ad homs. In my own defense, like, I, fe I feel like we could watch the VOD. They called me a dumb fuck, like, six times before this, you know, and eventually you just get a little bit tired of people thinking they're styling sure. on you and then you want to put them in their place by calling them out exactly what they're doing so would you agree that you, with that, that said the same did i i don't think i ever did i think sometimes <laughs> i mean oh, I, oh, in response in response oh yes i did in response absolutely for sure and tiberius don't even want to be a part of this no more take a set set yeah. off come on yeah so Dude, we're just gonna all to listen not doing I, I know what's gonna happen Demon Mama, yeah let it yeah. okay what happened to that what happened to that server mute did we uh, server mute the ones who interrupted me again yeah, I know how this. No, I know how this shit you works. You're I know how this shit works. I've been on a million panels. I know how this shit works. All right. So um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think that um, on matters of like like incredibly com complex philosophy, like as to where life begins, a, a thing that no one has a, a solid objective answer to. I think we have to, in the name of uh, of liberty and in the name of coexistence, we have to be be able to recognize that um, uh, we have to be able to recognize that people are going to come to different conclusions, have and will. And if we're trying to build a society that allows for liberty, and we can also recognize that people who believe that a baby uh, is not an individual um, at the moment of conception, those people are going to seek out um, go going to seek out an abortion if they so desire it. Um, I don't think that it's unreasonable to say that we should allow this to happen under safe and consensual conditions, um, especially when, and, and so that's where I, I go on that particular issue. I don't think that, I think that restricting people's rights is imposing your own um, inherently theological or, or philosophical view on somebody else. And uh, you might not like that, but I just think that that's a pretty obvious uh, example of what's going on. Likewise, we can see other examples of this party uh, restricting the ability of LGBT people to exist in public. Yeah, I think that you're in you're being in enabled to exist in public is like a pretty major imposition to being able to participate in society, the thing that humans need to, you know, survive. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think it's pretty fair to say that this party is is um, uh, infringing on people's rights, 
and also doing so in an aggressive way. And guess what? I don't really care if they got there um, by taking advantage of some hole in our allegedly, in, you know, in our obviously um, imperfect democratic systems. I mean, after all, Hitler was voted into power, if we recall. It doesn't really matter how people come into the power. I mean, what happens? What happens if tomorrow Joe Biden like suffers like a, a personality change and just starts assassinating people? Do you say, oh, well, he was democratically elected. I guess we can't do anything about it. No, of course not. We can recognize that people are capable of, of finding a way into a position and then using that position of power to impose um, wrong, uh, immoral, unreasonable things on other people, which is clearly what's going on in Poland. Um, and also, might I add, what's happened in our country quite a lot as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I don't really care how, um, how like a fascist we weasels their way into power. When they start oppressing and repressing people, when they start making it possible for, um, uh, for LGBT people to be driven out of the public eye, I don't really give a shit if you were elected there democratically. I think those people have every right in the world and every person who wants to ally themselves with them to depose you, to um, to fight you, to resist you in every single way imaginable, of course. Yeah, and I don't really care, like, what sort of, like, I don't know, your, like, year two and a half philosophy class taught you about, oh, it's it's definitely hard science when the sperm meets the egg. That's what makes it individual. So, yeah, I don't really give a shit about that. Okay. Now, again, open discussion. Please remain cordial. Finally got my chance. Does anybody want to respond? Yeah, I have something really quick. Okay, Brent, so, I'm going to pull her out. Sure, you. Let's say, Dean Mama, you have been able to finish many thoughts in this roundtable. You have not been interrupted every single time you've spoken. So that's an, that's an overstatement, right? Okay, but wait, Brenta, you can recognize that over the last 10 minutes, she's, I mean, again, like, I, yeah. I've, been, I've been here. Yeah, it's been no, very no, difficult. I've been, I've been listening, yeah. And I'm not saying no one's been interrupting or insulting Demon Mama. Not at all. Okay. No, I'm not saying that at all, right? Okay. But I just want to make sure that that obviously... No, there's been a, it's been a huge back and forth and Every that, and, but many times she's been able to speak. Panel. And even mama, you've also ad hominem to people at times. You can say only in response and you know what? Maybe someone else started it, but it's been back and forth. Both sides have been disrespectful. Okay. So sure. that's obvious. Correct. I'm glad. That are you asking it. me questions or is this just like rhetorical because you just want to like, like, I don't know, feel good or something? Well, it's no, I just, want, I just like I just kind of want to set uh, the record. I mean, what's the record? The, the fact that like Which literally record? like nine I just nine right wing that guys all got mad because I I like said one thing in disagreement. And they were so afraid of the outcome that they were pissing themselves and interrupting me repeatedly. Yeah, I don't know. I think the vod speaks yeah, for itself. Uh, no, by the way, by the way, this happens. By the way, by the way, guess what? Just so you all know, you asked me a question and I'm responding and you literally won't let me respond. It's actually hilarious. You asked me two. Two separate questions. Over. Are you people no, this didn't stupid? You talk. Guys, remember, the conversation just devolves if all we do is talk over each other. And what again, am no, I doing? But Brento, I do feel like this question was a little bit like twist the knifey. It's kind of like, you know, I just she was able to... I know, I know. And, and again, I agree with you, uh, you know, that the, it has been from both sides, but like bringing the conversation back to this topic, as opposed to talking about the far more interesting topic, which is, well, hopefully the topic that we were talking about. Interesting. Um, it doesn't really move the conversation. It's just kind of like, out. hey, Demon Mom, I just want to let you know, okay. you know, you were shitting on other people. And it's kind of like, well, now we're just bringing the conversation back to the, the thing that we weren't I able agree. to do. This I right agree. here is like what we would call the definition of a troll. And that's what Demon Mom has been doing. Right. Nice so again, meme, everyone. So, so hey. Does Wait, does anybody have anything to respond to what she said? Yeah. Like to the actual Okay. Okay, yeah. Sweet. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So um I think Demon Mama, you'd agree with this aspect. Like it probably is important to understand like how like the poll like how they came into power. I, I I would definitely understand like how the the Law and Justice Party came into power because you'd probably want to stop um those same loopholes or address the reasons why that happened in the future. I think that's something we both agree with. Oh, sure. And then secondly, I think um, the philosophy, I think philosophy is relatively important when we make like ethical and like the law decisions, because if you aren't consistent there, you'll lack to be consistent anywhere else, right? Um, if you don't have a strong basis there. Um, and this is actually something that I think, like, for example, a lot of like what we consider conservatives do, right? Is that they have no basis in ethics or philosophy and they're extremely inconsistent in that way. So I think it's important that whenever we talk about these things or we make prescriptions about what like the Polish government should uh, 
uh, should do. I think to a certain extent that we should have a background in philosophy, and that's why I think um, even though like you and Brian may have had like a, like a like a weird back and forth, I think there is value in what he's talking about, right? Because if yeah. we can't even necessarily establish a philosophical basis, we can't make it like a, a prescriptive one either. I mean, I don't disagree with you that philosophy is important and interesting. It's just you have to keep it within the scope of the conversation. We're talking about Poland's politics, and then we're diving off into this like extremely dragged out heard it 10 bazillion times through my entire life it's the most talked about fucking bullshit on the internet is this argument about well does life begin when the sperm go into the egg or and it's just like okay i get it everybody has a different view on this it's clearly a polarizing issue and i understand but like there comes a point where you have to recognize that like either you're embracing the law and order worldview which is that um, everyone who disagrees with me is intrinsically a murderer and therefore I can oppress them. Or you say, maybe there's some pretty serious and understandable philosophical differences here that every individual person is, it has a completely different appearance on and we need to build policy in order to f facilitate that. And for that type of conversation, how we build and how we advocate for a policy or for a country that's even, I don't think that like trying to trying to repeat the 900 year old argument of where does life begin whether it's when god sprinkles fairy dust on top of it or whether it's whatever like i don't think that that's important for the scope of this discussion the funny okay. thing about it is you're yeah, actually right. so fucking stupid that you can't even nice understand day. what i said it has nothing nice to do day. with whether or not life begins life beginning could happen at fucking 25 years old it still wouldn't change the fact that whether or not an individual at zero has the same future like ours as they do at 10 billion. Like, it doesn't matter about where life begins. The only thing is whether or not you deprive anything, whether or not you want to call that life, of a future like ours. Okay, I mean, then I would also advocate that if we're going to like, if you're going to stick to this argument, first of all, I would say that it literally also still doesn't matter because you're going to encounter people with a very different, with a very different moral framework. Obviously, this is a huge, this is an issue that is like, been hotly contested in politics. People have very different moral frameworks for how they view this particular issue. And, um, and additionally, like, like, I don't, like, again, it doesn't really seem relevant to me with regard to how we need to structure a country in order to maximize cooperation like and and also well-being like at the end of the day even if you go by your per, your specific out, outlook the end of the day the non order and justice party solution is the better solution because it leads to less actual abortions happening in the first place less uh terminated pregnancies that also kill the mother it, again at the end of the day it's irrelevant because it, it because what you're arguing about is again some personal philosophy thing whether you want to proselytize to people about you know god and when people when life begins and when it doesn't begin or when you should whether it's depriving a, a future um who are you arguing against right now i'm talking to you I never said God once, so I'm just kind of confused as to where your dumb fuck ass got that. Hey, Brian, listen, I, please, no more ad hominem. Dumb fuck ass, dumb fuck, stupid fuck, idiot. Uh, all those words, let's just remove Those are them. just true facts. That has nothing to do with ad hominem. Ad hominem have to be they're, just, they're, they're, just, they're just insults that just deteriorate the conversation. I know you know that because you're smarter than that. So again, I, on, on the one hand, you can dislike Demon Mama as a person, right? And on the other hand, you can have a conversation with her cordially. And I want us to do the the other hand thing. I guess I want you to do this thing rather than this thing that you're currently doing. Can I respond to Demon Mama? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, so Demon Mama, like I, I agree. The, the Law and Justice Party is pretty bad, okay? But there are bad governments They can... I don't agree with the policy that they're doing, but it is possible for a bad government to, to put in one good policy, right? And now we're arguing, sure, sure. like, right, whether this specific good policy, like, this policy is good or not, right? I don't think, I don't think, Brian, you're not in favor of the Law and Justice Party, right? Like, just to make that clear, you wouldn't want them. No, to I'm a lefty. I yeah, fucking hate right wingers. <laughs> So, um, and so the important aspect of this is we're trying to isolate whether this policy is something that we consider to be, um, I guess in this case, ethical or moral. And, and you mentioned, right? Like you mentioned well-being, right? Like we need to make policies that like uh, effectively increase well-being and, and like cooperation, depending on your framework, that may not be something that you value at all. And even if, for sure. example, like we consistently do this, right? But you want to be able to convince other individuals of like <clears throat> what your position is and like justify it to them. 
Um, but the best way to do that is probably to appeal to certain aspects of their ethical framework. I mean, framework, Polar, with all due respect, I appreciate the adv mm -hmm. the debate advice, but let's be real. What the last experience was, I think that the, the last like 10, 15 minutes have spoken for themselves of literally people getting so triggered at me even trying to say my opinion that they just call me a dumb fuck for an hour. It's like, so, yeah, yeah, hilarious. yeah. Okay, I, yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah, I mean, it's um, kind of a hostile environment. I tried this. multiple times to explain what I was talking about and why I think it's a bad policy. Mm -hmm. I literally laid out multiple reasons and no single response, no single response on substance at all. Literally just you're a dumb fuck because I'm angry and I don't know. Okay. And I have to, so wait. The, yeah, I mean, no. Okay, yeah. Polaris, I'm going to let you finish. I, okay, yeah. You can finish first. Yeah, Sure. So, um, like, yeah, this, this has been really heated. That's that's why I'm trying to, like, you know, you don't really get at it. But, like, uh, there was mentioned, you mentioned that, like, rights, right? And you're, like, harming someone else's rights. And that's, mm -hmm. it, like, Brian is being kind of inflammatory, but I think that was an interesting part, right? Like, how do you justify a right? Um, what are these rights? Are Do these rights supersede um, other aspects of, like, pleasure or pain? Are they intrinsic? And, like, that's a really important – like, you, that was something that you'd mentioned. That's what you used to justify it. Uh, but, like, Brian tried responding to that, but it was just – it was just an inflammatory, like, wave of fire that, like, no one could really, in, like, interpret what was going on. So, yeah, I agree okay. with so, that like, reading of the How do you justify those rights? Um, and, like, what rights is, like, uh, abortion not violating or something like that? I think that's the point. I, 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 I do think that's an intelligent question to raise polars. But I also – I really do want Dina Mama's initial question to get answered of mm – -hmm. Even if it is the case that we restrict abortion on a federal level, you know, we employ like all of the the, the full front, the full force of the state on women, um, on individuals that seek out abortion services. It seems to be the case that we just have the opposite effect um, in terms of actually preventing said abortions. Dima Mama brought up this point earlier, and it didn't really ever seem like she got a very substantive response to that. So does it's anybody true, have didn't. something to respond to the claim that, hey, even if we do restrict abortion rights, right? Even if we just are, we're like, hey, abortion is just, it's morally wrong. It's reprehensible. The, go the state should get involved. We should restrict abortion. That's wholesale. true. It just seems to be the case that this does not bear out uh, yeah, the positive consequences. Trying. So you if we're even remotely going to like be sort of uh, consequentialist in this respect of, of caring about the outcomes and and especially ascribing moral weight to the outcomes of certain policies that we, um, that we implement, uh, what do we have to say to that pl uh, claim that she's made? So what are yeah, okay. I I'm just say really quick. I we're not we're not concluding the abortion debate that is riled you know riles in the world on tonight. If you think babies are, if you think unborn children at conception are alive, abortion is murder, and therefore banning it can only be positive. If you don't, then it you think it's an infringement on women's rights, and banning it is uh, negative. That's it. That's the debate. Like that's no. that's all. I mean, what do you want? There's nothing right. else. It's, it's not just what I want. So again, I want to mention two things. No, no, I literally I'm won't really, engage with the like question. I'm not saying that to you like, personally. I know that you're not saying that to me personally, but it seems like you're uh, sort of sweeping under the rug two things. First of all, the article that was at play, which involved specifically the regional Poland, How the law and justice party. How convenient that the right-wingers uh, don't want to address the, the questions. That provided a unique context to not just talking about abortion again for like the 500th mm -hmm. time on a panel. I think that there's an interesting conversation to be had there that I thought we could explore, and it seems like we mostly haven't done that. And then the second point is just, again, bringing back up what Dima Mama said from the start, which is that, hey, even if we think abortion is wrong – and again, I'm a moderator. I'm not trying to actually I argue. Got no, fine. Go ahead. I have no, I'm going to make a statement, but I'm not arguing this. It's just something yes. that she's that we still have yet to address which is listen hey, it's got to be re-explained by like, a man for them to take sucks, it seriously it's wrong it's evil and we ban it it seems to be the case that in every modern society that we've tried that it ends up in more or at least equivalent numbers of abortions happening in very unsafe ways so it's like hey even if we think it's wrong like what do we do about that you know we ban it it's like okay now women are, you know, sticking hangers up their fucking uh, uterists and uh, and endangering themselves. Much certainly low. endangering the fetus. Don't worry, um, we'll have a talk we, after this. What this do we do about that? It's like we, we banned abortion, and it's like it, it keeps happening. And then not only is it happening, but it's happening in a very unsafe way. It is. Sure. Uh, it, it, it causes demonstrable, demonstrable harm to true. society, that's and I do true. mean that wholesale. The mother, the child that could be born, right? The family that's going to be broken because an unsafe abortion and procedure I'm resulted in the death of pregnancy of in a very sure. violent way. So what do I'm we do about that? I'm all for triggering right-wingers, but still it gets tiring address. everyone. I would just like us to talk about that because if we're going to go down this rabbit hole of like, hey, abortion could be wrong, it's like, even if it is wrong, like what do we do about women that still seek out abortion procedures when we ban it? Because that's an I interesting thing. I agree Sorry. with Demon Mama, right? Like, and I think Brian, uh, like, I, I agree, right? Um, it, it seems like, 
um they don't necessarily have the effect of like ending it all so that's where probably the, the ethical aspect ends but i think brian i think Biden tried saying this but like even if it results in a two percent decrease in abortion um i don't know if you considered it worth it and you mentioned at the end why that like in looking at it in a consequential like framework right god i have to stop focusing on the ethics but i i do agree with demon rama that like it doesn't even seem like these policies actually effectively reduce abortion that they can make it more harmful and if you look at it from a consequentialist aspect that um there's a lot of harm being done there's more there's increased harm in that sense tiberius because man we haven't heard from you in a while do you have any thoughts on this um, yeah, I do. But nuts. long the short is that I, I I do side with more of Polar and Demon Mama on this one as far as how this works out. Consequentially, I, I mean, copy paste what Polar said. The only thing that I would throw out there, although this isn't really much of an argument, is that we will never truly know how many abortions are had in any society that outlaws abortions. That you know, that's yeah. just blatantly black market operations. It's an yeah. assumption. Whether we want to go in the particulars of if that assumption is valid or not, we can do that. But uh, I would probably go more with the left counterparts here that, yeah, they're they're correct. Socko, because we haven't heard from you in a while, too. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So, so I agreed with, I want to say some, some, some of what uh, Brian and CTV said, but they really made it hard for me to, like, actually say that. Um I'm trying to think what was my original point uh, mm. that I was going to make. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In response to something that someone in chat asked Brian, it was, so Brian is against anyone dying at any time, at any place ever. Wait, uh, yeah. You no, I don't, think, well, hold on. I don't think he said that. And he said, and no, that's literally what the person in chat asked Brian. Uh, anyone dying. In any time, at any place, ever, and I believe Brian said. I don't I really care. Oh, it seems relevant and annoying. Who uh, gives a shit about chat? Oh no! Don't please. Don't, 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 don't you say that things about chat? Oh, 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 chat should look. Chat should be happy that I bothered to fucking show up, right? Yeah. So like, <laughs> that's just how chat doesn't get in on the okay. panel when we have a balancy roundtable in operation. Back to what I said, okay? Yes, true leveler. Obviously, that's what I'm advocating. I love my you chat, it, dude. Oh. Now, unfortunately, okay. I can't put inflection on Twitch chat. Yeah, so Brian was so this is post law in full effect, right? Brian was being sarcastic, but it was via text, and you couldn't infer it from the internet. I understand that. Okay, all of us have are probably on the spectrum to some extent, and I'm not even I saying love that. My chat. I'm not I even love saying that to be in any way, shape, or form. I'm not right right now. Left right now, dude. Oh, I have Asperger's. I have Asperger's. I have the card. So listen, I'm on a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Stocko, I love you. I'm on a four dimensional spectrum. Stocko, listen, yeah. So Sako, I love you. Was there anything besides taking Brian out of context? That you to no, I have, I have, I have no. Okay. Uh, I had something else. Can I just say what I put in our chat? Okay, Planned Parenthood, good. Sex Ed, good. No, yeah, and I, I, and I really, no I really want to touch on that. Abortion still bad. So I really want to yeah. touch on that because I liked most of what you said. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm of the mindset where it's like I'm not. Uh, I'm not pro-life in the sense of like are most people yeah, where it's like anti-choice. Uh, I am I am pro-life in the sense that like I don't want people to abortions, but if they feel that it is necessary and they are in a situation where that child would grow up in poverty because poverty is hell. Uh, yep. Then that in that case, that that's perfectly understandable. Uh, I think we can do a lot to limit the amount of abortions that are had. And Brian brought that up. Planned Parenthood, or, or, or sex education, better sex education, stronger sex education, free contraception. Like, those, are, those are things that we can do to limit the amount of abortions that are had. Not only that, but we could increase the social safety net, make it easier to lift yourself out of poverty from government programs, and things like that. And People have less abortions because less people are in poverty. Okay. Um, CTV, I, I sense that you wanted to get on this. If you don't want to, I understand. But did you want to say something? I, I just kind of like to close out the night. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, it's, it's 1230 here. So. Here we yeah. go. Oh, yeah, There's the sure. rag on me. Here this we go. is the last hop. I was going through closing thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll just kind of hit it off, I guess. Uh Demon on both mama. sides of this thing, government involvement uh, at the federal level specifically 
ends up having a whole lot of ink. We're talking in about it, Poland. Right? What do you mean the federal? Uh, I level? really do feel like that this issue needs to be a lot closer to the constituents themselves so that the constituents inside of a state can decide that for themselves. Right. And then that's where everybody else goes, Oh, well, that's why we have to have it at the federal level, because if a state decides that they don't want to do it, right, then they should be forced to do it. Right. Well, that's the same type of logic that has us involved in endless worlds, endless wars around the world He's because so then they go oh well these people are over here he getting killed who he is so right now we have to go over there and tell people what to do so it seems oh, like the people that are the Dick most Rider. authoritarian on it are the ones that want to he control it more he and then start advocating for more and more it's government in order to do that right and that is almost a reality of every single person that you see that advocates for more government is that they want to be able to control other people and they are using the government in order to do that and they will do whatever it is that they need to do they will justify it however they need to justify it in order to, to get the government to have that control no, 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 no. and it doesn't no matter nuts. what the issue is that's where i am philosophically consistent across the board hmm. right okay so nazi Say again? Are you a Nazi? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it, it's, How is it? This is, so this is this is one of those questions <laughs> where... No, I love you, bro. I love you. You're yes. not a Nazi. <laughs> no. He's not. I, no, he, he was not Doug. Yeah, I no, mean, I, I love having these conversations about the government and its structure and what its impact should be on the people and what at what appropriate level is it that it needs to be at, right? And that's where it's really important... To be pointing out the authoritarian rhetoric that people spit because it doesn't matter what the issue is. You can tell how their mind is structured based on what type of power that they're trying to get over an individual's life, right? And that's why I really liked Brian's argument was because he was rooting it in the individual, right? And that's really important because the what? rest of the collective no, he wasn't. in all cases should be trying to protect the rights of the individual because Sir, this at the is end a of the day, we're all individuals like right in this collective. So we should all be fighting for each other's rights because that will ensure our own. Okay. Uh, let's go to Dima Mamet. Dima Mamet, uh, we're, we're sort of doing closing thoughts. So, and I know a lot was said, uh, did you have something to say? Something, something to add? Yeah, I got yeah. a couple of things to say. Um, sure. Yeah, so uh, the first thing I'm going to say is that um, I don't think that most conservatives, but especially the Law and Order Party, gives a fucking shit about babies or individuals. I think what they care about is being able to control women and control sexuality because they have this um, in, in, like devotion to some weird worldview where uh, of dominance that usually involves strong patriarchal bonds and traditionalism it's it's pretty much all across the board i don't think any of their arguments hold up otherwise they would care a whole lot more about uh, social programs they would care a whole lot more about individual liberty but they don't they never do um in my mind i do agree with ctv on that one thing i don't know what he was talking about for the rest of the time but at one point he did say that a lot of governments um are sort of obsessed with control and i do agree that that's the case i think that most of the abortion argument boils down to attempting to assert control over people who've been increasingly liberated uh people who might disagree with you in some ways and i think there's just a increasing justifications um that that say you know uh, that, that people come up with, with to try and justify uh, asserting their worldview over someone else's um, in a, in a um, it, 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 you know, by, by sidestepping morality or sidestepping philosophy by bl making the conversation impossible to actually have about policy or about differing viewpoints. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the case. I think a lot of this is, um, again, used by large far right. Um, organizations to create moral panics in which they garner power. I think this has been used historically over and over again. If you research how far-right governments work, they usually seize on some sort of moral panic, whether it's abortion or Jewish people or whatever. They freak out about something and then they make it a big deal. Usually a mixture of the of the of them all. Um, I think it would matter if if uh, you know these these sort of laws would have any. Um, positive effect, but they don't. They simply don't. The situation is worse. There's no 2% reduction. There is a um, severe uh, infringement of people's like actual ability to live out their own moral principles with no benefit besides, conveniently, 
instituting traditionalist structures of moral and social control. And I think that really should be the focus. Um, and I don't know. Uh, I think this was definitely a very interesting um, case study in women on panels. Uh, I just wanted to make a small note that my question did not get answered until it was restated by the by a man. yeah by a man yeah. interesting how that always yeah. works and it's almost every panel too in fact it's so it's so common on these spaces that my chat literally has a bingo card and i'm guessing a lot of people got bingo tonight so congratulations to all the bingo winners on the uh rampant uh misogyny and and disrespect category um was uh should be really fun hey there we go we got a bingo yeah there we go the bingos are coming out so yeah anyway uh thanks for having me on it was very very interesting talking to some of these um interesting fellows i wouldn't call them gentlemen but yes uh thanks for having me on and uh, i've had a, a very good time not a problem um okay and i did want to throw it over to polar's world because uh i don't i don't i think i've heard from polar's or uh brento so yeah is this um like closing statements and yeah. um okay sure yeah I'll so say maybe stated my basic shit on this uh I think you know ethics are important but Demon Mama does bring up a good like uh like what's the actual practical application of this and I think that's also really important but I think I've made my thoughts on that very clear um I don't really harbor any ill will against anyone on this panel okay no matter what's no matter what shit is being thrown uh but yeah my name is Tilly's World. Uh, I, I mean, I, I enjoyed this panel to a, to a certain. <laughs> I had some fun on it. My chat definitely had a lot of fun with it. So thank you, Wyatt, for having me on. Um, oh, yeah, but um, hey, uh, it was fun talking to everyone. Um, Tiberius, I know you're not a big fan of philosophy. <laughs> my, my no, no, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no, look, I, I just... I probably should get back to this. Um, but no, my name is Polis World. Um, I have some big stuff coming up for the new year. Project Polar is in the works. It's gonna be very cool, very big. Oh yeah, I forgot to plug like, myself. Wired for having me on. This is a really fun, like first type of panel. Um, I guess that's my spiel. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and Brento, I guess to finish this off, what's up? Closing thoughts on that segment. Uh, well, sorry, that particular topic, and then just in general, what's up? Uh, I don't know. My closing thoughts were my were my opening thoughts, and uh, you know, um, oh, it's okay. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I I don't think that. Poland is like a fascist nation or anything like that. I think uh, that's like no, nah, it's all good. I, I think that's hyperbole. I think that's going. I'm sure um, they'll come over too far to you know make the argument. Um, nope, it is into a sort of moral panic. Uh, I do feel like they shouldn't have made the law, um, and I, I will probably create some problems. Um, I don't know. That's that's about that's about as far as I could get on this one. Uh, but thank you for having me on. This, on it was great. Poland is like yeah, ridiculous. This was a very interesting no, pilot episode. Fashion. I really hope I can do this again sometime. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for the panelists. Uh, I've shouted you guys all out in my uh, chat. If you guys want to leave now, you certainly can. I'm not going to hold you it against you. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. It was a really good conversation. Cool. Uh, yep. I'm just going to do some closing things with my stream. So I'm going to leave the chat now. But you guys can feel free to disagree uh, in this Discord or if you guys want to take it to a different Discord. Uh, I know there is a little bit of contention between the between some of you so yeah if anyone yeah, wants gonna... to come by and have a talk afterwards i'm going to be doing some streaming for a while so the invite is open to everyone except for ctv ctv you got to go get some rest dude got to sleep that off polar running me over on the ethics i'm sorry i don't like to have conversations that no, I, I don't blame for you. you bastard i don't blame you <laughs> i love all of you take care huh? okay well, yeah cool. I'm sorry. you guys take care Bunga. That was interesting. Let's get out of the call here. Oh man. So, um, like, I thought uh, I don't, I thought it was actually right. gonna like do a little bit of a closing oh, thoughts there because really? uh, yeah. Um, the the big mm. thing at least for me is like you know, I'm more on the right wing, and if I just ethically shot at it, I'd actually be more on like the pro choice side. But uh, or no, I'm sorry, more, more pro life side. However, I I think that this is a wonderful uh, example of like where that ideology. Like oh, where an ideology missed, can go uh, too uh, far, I don't know. or an ethical code can go too far. Where... All right, we're, we're getting out of here. I don't actually care. That was really interesting, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that was a that was an interesting little time. The last half was rough. I mean, it was definitely fucked. Oh shit.